Hello, everybody, and welcome along to the Michelin Countdown to Green as we bring our atmospheric show to an end down on the pit lane. It's John Hindorf and Jeremy Shaw in the IMSA broadcast booth. Lovely to have you company. Shea Adam will be down in the pit lane for us. It's time to go racing at Canadian Tire Motorsport Park. The cars are rolling out of pit lane onto the two and a half miles of classic road racing circuit that is Canadian Tire Motorsport Park for the Mobile One Sports Car Grand Prix, the Canadian round of the IMSA WeatherTech Sports Car Championship. IMSA Radio and TV are together for the next three hours or so. And it will be Ricky Taylor in the number 10 Cadillac that leads off the field. 10 corners on this serpentine pavement that wraps itself around the countryside of Canadian Tire Motorsport Park, celebrating 50 years of Grand Prix running this August 1967. The big race here that everyone still talks about. And the cars are rolling at the far side of the circuit. Welcome to you here at the track on 90.7 FM and scanner frequency 454. Also to our listeners around North America on XM201, Sirius 145, and around the world on IMSA.com, the IMSA app, and IMSA.tv. Shea Adam, first item of business, do we have a clear pit lane? We have a completely empty pit lane, John. The uh, red light is on at pit out, so anybody who comes in at this point would be stopped, but there is nobody left. Keys to the race, Jeremy Shaw. This is a 160 minute race, two hours 40. Sprinting with strategy. That's what I've said there. Got to get the balance right. Uh, pushing without risk in traffic. Keep it clean in the pits. Any penalties are going to be very costly. And tired and emotional. What is the strategy for changing tyres or not changing tyres? Traffic is always going to be an issue on a short circuit like this, and it will come up within the first, what, three laps or so for the guys at the front of the field. Yeah, it won't be very long, certainly before the uh, faster prototype cars are lapping the uh, back end of the uh, GTD field, a little bit more than that perhaps, but they, they, they will come up awfully fast, and from there on to the end of the race, it'll be uh, traffic, traffic, traffic for the leading contenders, and they've got to work their way through, they've got to be patient at times, they've got to be aggressive, but passive aggressive if you like. Don't be over aggressive. If you do that can end up in you can end up in the fence very, very quickly indeed on this super fast racetrack. This is the end of the first formation lap coming past our broadcast centre here. The marshals with their flags out, making sure that everyone knows where the flag points are. Getting a bit of a wave from one or two of the drivers. And thanks once again to our volunteer corner workers, flag marshals, our intervention teams, as well as track services, recovery, and all of our volunteers for this weekend and every weekend. It's John Hindorf, Jeremy Shaw, and Shea Adam around the circuit, as well as around the world here for IMSA Radio with the cars on their second and final warm-up lap. This is too close to call in three of the four categories. I think I've got a handle on PC, but only just the 38 car hot favourite there in terms of pace, but it's got to get to the end of the two hours and 40 minutes. But for the other three classes, Jeremy Shaw, throw a dart board at the end, uh, throw a dart at the end list, quite frankly. Yeah, absolutely right. Uh, yeah, I do think the Lexus had a glance of it on the screen there. They're looking super strong at the moment. They made great strides with that uh, RCF GT3 car in recent weeks. The car has been fast in Europe and uh, they've made great, great progress here as well. And uh, both of those cars should be competitive this afternoon. One of them has got to start from the back. That's Robert Alon. He doesn't have nearly as much racing experience as does his teammate Jack Hawksworth, but Jack is fabulously fast and anxious to make up for a mistake yesterday in the practice session that caused a lot of damage to that car, uh, number 15 car. So uh, when he gets behind the wheel, he's going to be charging and he wants to bring home a result for that, uh, for that team. 
IMSA, the motor racing series built for aliens because you need three heads and three pairs of yeah. eyes at least to keep track of what's going on in the, the different categories. The Cadillac safety car, pace car as it is now, safety car if we see it again, is clearing off, the lights are out, and the white CTSV heads into the pit lane as we wait now for Ricky Taylor and Misha Goikberg in the black number 10 Cadillac and the 85 Oregon to come round. The bright yellow car on the outside might get the better run to the first corner, but only if it can outdrag the big 6.2 litres, which I don't think it will do. No, Ricky Taylor drops in to turn number one, that diving right-hander, and gets away from pole position, side-by-side -side action. The 38 the 26, James French and Garrett Grist on it straight away at the head of the field, and Grist might be just nicking the lead away there in the PC category. Further ahead, the number 90 of Mark Goosens and Christian Fittipaldi having a bit of a battle there, and it looks like the Goose may have just got the better of that one. No, he's had a drop back, and the two Masters are right in behind him as well. Fantastic stuff early on as the 52 car it is that's dropping down down the field just a little bit. The Ligier in 10th position at the moment, but at the head of the field, Ricky Taylor and Misha Goikberg, clean start, and those two lead the field from Scott Sharp in third. Yeah, really good uh, start there, nice clean start. Very aggressive getaway there by Garrett Grist in Canada 26 from Grimsby, Ontario. So he's a, one of the many guys to cheer for in this race if you're a local fan here. And Garrett uh, looking to make his opportunities, his uh, first uh, drive in this car this season, looking to take full advantage of it. 70% full throttle for the prototypes around the lap. According to our friends at Mazda, this is a quick circuit. It's an unforgiving circuit, and these early laps could be absolutely crucial in all of the three classes. In GTLM, the two BMWs have got to the front. First and second, 25 and 24 from the 911 and 912. Then the two Fords, then the two Corvettes. So it is Noah's Ark formation, BMW, Porsche, Ford and Corvette for the first eight positions of that field. And they are separated by nothing at all as they head round in team formation, 25, 24, 911, 912, 66, 67, and three and four. That's how they stand in GTLM. Sage Caram holds on to the lead in GT Daytona from Andrew Davies in the Audi number 57 in second, and Jeff Siegel in the 86 Acura in third position. Yeah, no change out the front in GTD, but the, a lot of uh, shuffling around in GTLM now. As you say, the BMWs are both making strides there toward the front, a great effort by those two. The two Fords changing positions as well on that opening lap. A great start there by number 55, Jonathan Bomarito, to get ahead of Johannes van Overbeck in the Nissan. So uh, Ricky Taylor, you know, he's got an advantage of about one, one, just over a second at the moment. But uh, this is very, very early on, and uh, the race will take a few laps yet to properly settle down. Yeah, tell that the guys in the midfield who are scrapping at the moment, <laughs> having to have a owl-like neck at the moment to see what's going on around everybody. Ricky Taylor has opened up a 1.1 second lead over Misha Goitberg, the gloss black Konica Minolta DPI VR racing team. So if I call it the gloss black Cadillac, you'll now understand why. 85 in second place is the Orica. That's the global LMP2 spec car with the Gibson engine. Misha Goikberg, local driver. With his uh, little one's birthday this weekend and possibly at the track. Haven't had confirmation of that yet. It's got Sharp in third position in the first of the ESM. Tequila Patron, Nismo powered leash years, and then it's the first of the Masters, Jonathan Pomerito in the 55, that's the metallic red car, the sole red machine. And situation normal restored in the PC with James French finding his way ahead of Garrett Gris. So Garrett gets the early jump there, but James French in that number 38 team, that team looking to maintain its perfect record this season. They've been on the pole. Well, there's one race they weren't on the pole, but they won all the other races. They set fastest lap in every race, and they've been a dominant force. Uh, and that's not that's because everybody does a good job on that team. Good start from Catherine Legg as well. 
the 93 Acura, two for two in the last couple of races, going for the hat trick in GT Daytona, moved up to fifth position on the start there. In behind the Lamborghini, Brian Sellers, the black and red number 48 is in fourth. Then Catherine's teammate, Jeff Siegel, in the 86 in third. Andrew Davis for 57, Stevenson Audi in second, and still leading that Lexus of Sage Caram. And uh, at the front of the field on the oh. first... Oh, it's, oh. Not the, it's not the 90 car again, is it? Mark Goosen's it is. The, Mark Goosen's car with less than five minutes down and the bad luck that has plagued the Visit Florida. Number 90, the blue car with the pixelated side pods for the last couple of races is dropping down. The Multimatic chassis has hit problems early on. Now, the car has pulled over to driver's right coming out of Moss Corners. He's going to go a lap down when Ricky Taylor comes around this time, which is about now, to go by him. Oh, he's got going. The 90 has got going. It is not under the Mobile One sign. So a slow-moving number 90 trying to make its way back around the circuit. It's coming up to turn number eight now. So was that just the old three-fingered salute then from the goose? Well, he's gone past pit entrance. He must feel he's got it fixed. Control, alt, delete, reboot, refire. And off he goes into the race. He will be one fired up driver. The goose is loose again. Ricky Taylor leads, but just by 0.8 of a second, Goikberg kicking him in on us at the head of the field and doing the fastest lap last time around, a 109.4. Yeah, and in fact, the last four laps, the, the two leaders have traded fastest laps. The first flying lap of the race was uh, the uh, number 10 car at a nine, at one minute 9.4. That was a new lap record, by the way. It wasn't 9.8, it was 9.9. .9. That was a new lap record, by the way, in the first lap, flying lap of the race. The old record standing last uh, two years ago to Aussie Negri at a 110.2 in 2015. Next lap, it was Goikberg who set fastest lap, then it was Taylor who set fastest lap again, and as you say, last time around a 1 minute 9.453, new fastest lap, lap record for car number 85, Misha Goikberg. Down to share Adam for a number 90, visitflorida.com update. One of the worst things you can hear is an electrical gremlin within a car. Goosen saw all the telemetry go down, everything on his dashboard disappeared in all the pit box. They lost complete control of the car, could not even see where it was on track. He did the three finger salute, the control all delete, and that seems to have fixed things for now. Uh, uh, that's scary, isn't it? Because that, if that happens again, whilst he's in traffic, that could be dangerous. Let's hope that whatever it is, that the Ghost in the machine has been cleared. GT Daytona, Lexus, Audi, Acura, and Lamborghini, Acura, Ferrari are your top six with Christina Nielsen, championship leader in that 63, along with Alessandro Balzan for Scuderia Corsa. 63 car has not won a race this season, but leading the GT Daytona championship on consistency and through force of will it would seem sometime and the goose has come to a halt again the 90 yeah. car in i think almost the same part of the track jeremy certainly on the no he's uh, further back down the circuit at turn three inside of turn three the headlights are flashing so he's got it going again he's going to have to bring that one into the pit lane i'm sure race control will be seeing guys you got to get that car in and have a proper look at it no headlights on that car now once he's got it going i think he may have started on the pit lane speed limiter which is why they were flashing when he got away heads up towards moss corner now awful awful start to a race in a season that has been not of what they were expecting or desiring the number 90 team meantime the battle for the lead going over the skyline down to the dip at the bottom of turn number two and they are side by side for a moment. Goikberg was challenging Ricky Taylor, but has to drop into line. Yeah, and uh, already now amongst the traffic, are lap seven completed on lap eight right now and working their way through the uh, tail end of the field in GTD. And that's uh, given Goikberg an opportunity to, to close up. And how much does this traffic affect them? Well, uh, last lap around was a one minute 12.0 for Ricky Taylor. He'd been lapping in, in the mid, mid uh, nines before that. So two and a half seconds lost when he's negotiating that slower traffic. But that's what we talked about, the keys to the race, Jeremy, push without risk. No point 
in damaging the car. He hasn't got another five and a half hours to get this back as they did at Watkins Glen in the six hours, the sale in six hours, what, less than a week ago or just on a week ago. He's got to keep that car underneath him because Misha Goikberg is so close that any small stutter, he'll be through it into the lead. I think this is really mature driving once again from Ricky Taylor and Misha Goikberg is driving brilliantly. Yeah, he absolutely is. I mean, he's certainly not been around the sport. Uh, I mean, he's been around sport a fair, a fair while, but you know, not at this level as much as Ricky Taylor has. And uh, for both these two now, they've got to be they've got to be careful. They've got to be incisive. They've got to be calculating at the same time. It's a great aerial shot uh, of this uh, wonderful racetrack. Uh, drama for the lead GT Daytona car. Sage Caram oh. has some debris on the grill of that car. Not sure if the team have seen it yet, but when it came past us here, there was definitely something on the grill of that car. Now, you do not want, on a track that's this quick, to have something stopping the air getting into your radiators. It's not particularly hot today, but these racing cars run a very finite uh, systems, their systems running to very close call in terms of uh, the amount of air that they need through them. And not sure if Sage is aware of it either at the moment. We'll keep an eye on it when they come through. Didn't see him that time because he was uh, in traffic. Lots of yeah. blue on our timing screen means people are fine. Yeah, uh, flying, uh, finding some space to get some uh, get, get some space. It's a it's a clear rectangle of something or other, Jeremy. It might be a, a plastic bag or something like that on Sage Caram's grill of the 14 car. Yeah, strange, but he has at least pulled out. Uh, even yes, he has. With that, he's pulled out a, a substantial advantage of three seconds over Andrew Davis, number 57, Stephen Motorsports Audi, in a similar get back, gap back to third place, uh, and in third place in GTD at number 86, Acura. Uh, he, along with uh, uh, Madison Snow and uh, Brian Sellers, excuse me, and number 48, Paul Miller, racing Lamborghini, and Catherine Legg, who's got ahead of Christina Nielsen at the start. They are running fifth and sixth, those, the two ladies. But I tell you what, last time around for the leads, they won 14.09, so almost five seconds away from their ultimate pace. That is as they work their way through the GTD leaders. And the leader of the race comes by. Sage Karam, yeah, and it's definitely there on the left-hand side, just uh, on the grill. Something hanging down or being pressed to it with the aero pressure. Such fine margins for these racing cars in terms of airflow. That may be causing a problem. First two have gone by the lead leader. It's uh, certainly not on the 15. I've had a good look at that. So share Adam, uh, Continental Tire Pit Lane reporter. 90.7 around the track, scanner frequency 454, XM201 and Sirius 145. Further afield on IMSA.com, the IMSA app available for all three operating systems for your smart device. Go to your app store, search IMSA and get it downloaded. It's absolutely free and there's no in-app purchase required for timing and scoring, onboard cameras and live audio and video subject to the US blackout for network television. Tom Long has moved up into sixth place in the second of the Mads as it's car number 70. He's found a way past Christian Fittipaldi. Yeah, that is Fittipaldi down to seventh and Tom Long up to sixth. 10 Cadillac, 85 Orica, two Nissan, top three, separated by just on five seconds. Jonathan Bomarino, another half a second further back in the 55, the red Mazda. Then the second of the Nissans, that's the Second Tequila Patron car, 22, Johannes van Overbeck. And Shea Adam, I missed Sage coming through that time. Is that uh, piece of plastic or whatever it was still on the front of the 14, the leader in GTD? No, as he was getting passed by one of the prototypes being left, it flew off of his uh, nose. So now the 14 is clear. They got away with that one. Yeah, maybe he was able to wiggle it off. So, Jeremy, nice, clean start to the race. And Ricky Tra Taylor all of a sudden has pulled the pin the last couple of laps and got out to a 1.5 second lead, second and a half. But I've got to say, Misha Goikberg is certainly driving the wheels of that 85 car. 
both of the guys having to be very decisive in traffic. It's Jonathan Bomarito, the man most likely at the moment. He's putting Scott Sharp under pressure for third position overall. Indeed so, and a clear, clear lap on that last time around for the two leaders, almost identical lap times, one minute 9.8. So back to their pace. Now, though, they're going to have to work their pass with the uh, GTLM cars. They've already gone past all the GTD cars, and still Sage Cameron leads comfortably there over in second place Andrew Davis but uh, the GTLM cars they'll be a little bit more tricky as there's a number 90 car stopped again at the exit of turn five what a disaster I just can't believe the uh, amount of bad luck that team has had this season no look other than bad luck Jeremy it's been an absolutely massively character builder see character building season for that number 90 team for which Reed they'll be getting a bit sick now and a bit frustrated uh, in prototype challenge James French now has pulled out almost 10 seconds on Garrett Grace but Garrett put his best lap of the race in last time around GTLM still BMW BMW Porsche Porsche Ford Ford Chevy Chevy 25 24 9 11 9 12 66 67 3 and 4 that number 90 then. car's got going again, by the way, and it's, it's, it's up to speed when it's running. Yes, exactly. It's keeping the darn thing running. So frustrating. Yes. I think he's got to bring that car in shortly, just well, for them to... Maybe if they plug a computer in and flash the ECU or something. I'm just seeing words I've heard. Right? Yeah. I have no idea what that actually means. <laughs> um, but I think something needs to be done. Yeah, you, what you don't want to do, car is cutting out you know, when, when you've Correct. got somebody right hot, hot on your heels and you risk running into the back of you. So that is the danger for that car. Yeah, se when you've got a, a track that's 70% full throttle for the prototypes, um, everybody knows where you're full throttle. And if all of a sudden <coughs> you're not, yeah. the prototypes... You don't have to brake to slow down on these cars. The aerodynamic downforce slows them down very quickly when you lift off the accelerator pedal, the throttle pedal, and it could catch people out. So I expect to see that blue number 90 into the pit lane shortly. We are on Here that number 15. Now. Yeah, he's in the pit lane now. Shea Adam is down at Visit Florida's pit with the best pit board in the business in the shape of the great state of Florida. Mark Goosens brings the car in. You hear that? No engine noise coming ah. from the 90 as it rolls to a stop. They are going to change to four new Continental tires. They are refueling as well, but I would be shocked if the uh, passenger side door is not opened up and a computer is plugged in. Still doing the tire change. The fueling is done because it didn't need that much fuel. Uh, no computer has been plugged in as of yet. They're done with the tire change. Now the door goes open. Yep, they are changing out. I just saw the uh, symbol was given, the cut across the throat. They were telling him to completely shut off the car. Uh, they might be changing out one of the data sticks in the uh, passenger side compartment of the car. Mechanic is still buried in there as everybody else has now climbed back over the wall. Mark is gesticulating uh, a lot with his right hand. Left hand is still firmly on the wheel so that he can communicate with the team. And the mechanic who had stuffed himself on the right side of the car is now starting to extract himself again. But the team is not satisfied with the work that has been going on. No, this is this might be day over for the 90 car. No, now they're cleaning the windshield. Now that I've said that, they're taking their time. They just want to finish, I think, at this point, John. Track temperature, 103 degrees Fahrenheit, 69 degrees Fahrenheit in the air, according to the official numbers uh, at the moment. That's a big disparity uh, there, which is interesting that how the track is holding the temperature. It's a pleasant afternoon as we are trackside with IMSA Radio Live from Canadian Time Motorsport Park, XM201, Sirius 145, IMSA.com and the IMSA app, as well as IMSA TV, all together as we say hello to the biggest sports car racing audience in the world. IMSA Radio, part of the Radio Show Limited Network, the world's motorsport station. Two hours, 21 minutes still to go. 
at IMSA Radio if you want to get in touch with us here in the studio. And Ricky Taylor now just eases away to a three and a half second lead. The battles in GT Le Mans continue with BMW first and second, Porsche third and fourth, then the two Fords and the two Chevys. Sage Karam still leading by about two seconds now in the number 14 Lexus from Andrew Davis. He's got a decent gap back to Jeff Siegel, but behind Jeff Siegel in the 86 Acura, Brian Sellers, Catherine Legg, both battling. So those three cars, 86, 48 and 93, all battling for third place in GT Daytona. Coming to the end of the lap now. They are, and uh, the number 57 Audi, by the way, closing a little bit now on, on Sage County. The gap between those two, 2.3 seconds last term, and that's cut down from about three and a half not so long ago. Uh, meanwhile, at the front of the field, I think just the greater experience of Ricky Taylor of leading the race and running right up front has enabled him to edge out a little bit uh, over Michel Goitberg, but now, as they're working their way through traffic again, Michel is able to close right back up. He's made up almost a couple of seconds on Ricky on that last lap. So this is, as we talked about earlier, on. It's all about uh, the, yeah, the concentration levels required as Michel Gokbe is right on the heels of Ricky Taylor as they head over to the hill in turn two. This is the battle for the lead. Bit of clear circuit ahead. And as soon as there's clear circuit, the 6.2 litre V8 stretches its legs and uses its torque. Michel Goitberg having to try and keep the power on through the corners, take a little bit more corner speed than the black Cadillac ahead of him. Yeah, that, on that last lap, Ricky Taylor's lap time of 115.029. He'd been lapping in the uh, the high nines when he's got clear track, so over five seconds lost on, the, on that last lap. And that's what this race is all about, particularly here at Canadian Time Motorsport Park, because you've, uh, you, you are going to get held up by uh, slower traffic at some stage, and the key is not to get ruffled by it proving that IMSA Radio reaches right around the motorsport world. Hello to the Red Bull Ring Formula One press room. I'm Bradshaw tuned in there. Exciting Formula One event just finished, just in time for the main event of the afternoon here at Canadian Time Motorsport Park. I say that with a smile on my face. Annie, nice to know you're tuned in. Safe home for you and the rest of the Formula One press pack. 10, 85 and 2 at the top of the field, and it's that battle between the 10 and the 85. Cadillac and the Orica, fantastic to watch. But these battles in the GT categories are just as important for championship points. No move in GTLM. BMW, it's the pair of BMWs, which are now, what, three seconds apart, actually. Bill Oberlin for Martin Tomczyk, 25 from 24. And then they've got a little gap back to the Porsches. They've got a gap between themselves and a long gap back to the Chip Ganassi racing cars, 66 and 67. But they are closing, being closed in on by Jan Magnussen and Oli Gavin. It was down a half a second. It's just gone out about three quarters of a second. But we're going to have four GT Le Mans cars battling together from Ford, the blue oval and the bow tie. There is a long held rivalry and, comp and competition. Uh, in the pit lane, Shea Adam with this Continental Tire pit lane update. The 90 just left the pit lane, John. Still Mark Goosen's behind the wheel. And they did something that shows you a sign of the times. They took out a stick from the passenger compartment of the car at USC, plugged it right into their lead engineer's computer, and that diagnosed what was going on at least a little bit better. They did not even plug the car in using the cables that they have dedicated on the pit box. It was a problem that they wanted to diagnose a little bit quicker than that. Yeah, either that or they were changing the MP3 for Goose to listen to as he was uh, driving around. Might have had the wrong playlist. I, I, that's the only thing I can think of. At uh, two hours and 16 and a half minutes to go, and the leaders are together again as they head out onto the Andretti Strait, which is actually a curving part of the track. It also has three distinct rises, including quite a steep one just before the turn into the right-hander at turn eight at the end of that straight. And Goitberg again is looming large and very yellow indeed in the mirrors of Ricky Taylor's number 10 Konica Minolta racing car. He is, isn't he? He's, uh, Goitberg is not letting Taylor get away. It's a great drive by uh, Misha. He's uh, staying exactly where he needs to, to be in the early part of this, of this race. 20 laps now completed. Those two uh, pulled away now to around about six seconds over 
the third place car of Scott Sharp, who continues. Uh, it's his turn now to work his way through a whole bunch of traffic. Uh, Johnson Bomarito is right behind him as well, so battles for first and second and third and fourth. And uh, yeah, this is it's all that concentration here now at this stage in the game yeah. for these guys. They're a little bit more than uh, halfway through their stint. No, they're well over halfway through yeah. the stint. Almost three quarters of a stint done now. Uh, so you want to make sure, from Goitberg's point of view, he wants to be f as close as he can to the race leader when he comes in for his first pit stop. And let's not forget, Jeremy, these, all of these cars are starting the race on the tyres with which they're qualified on Saturday. So they've got a bit of work in them before they went back on the cars. And crucially, that means the teams had to put a little bit of a finger in the air in terms of which version of the Continental tyres in the uh, prototype class classes and the GT Daytona or the Michelins in GTLM which version of those slick tyres that they used in terms of where they thought the temperature would be right now. It was a little bit colder than we'd seen earlier in the week on Saturday but we have had some nice clear blue skies with that uh, temperature over 100 degrees Fahrenheit on the track but it's clouded over a little bit now and what we We'll keep an eye on is how quickly that track cools down, which might just mean that they have to make a change when they come for their first pit stop. Sage Karam doing a great job at the head of GT Daytona as the battles at the front of the field are now for third position with Scott Sharp seeing that very spelt and swooping dark red metallic number 55 that means it's the Mazda of Jonathan Bomarito very different look to the front end of that racing car and just a few moments ago very close indeed there was a touch between the 93 of Catherine Legg coming out of turn number one Catherine going out over the curve on the left hand side and as she drifted back to take her line through turn number two Scott Sharp squeezing through the gap and quite a considerable nudge right front of the GT car being the uh, Acura to left rear of Scott Sharp's prototype and that would have been deja vu for Scott there because uh, a week ago a similar contact albeit on the other side of a GT car took Scott Sharp out of the lead of the race at the seal and six hours of the Glen. Yeah, good point. The uh, leaders, by the way, they've got clear traffic. They're going to be enjoying this for the next uh, lap or two or th perhaps even three before they catch up with the, the next car. Uh, and uh, Ricky Taylor is now laying down some quick laps. He knows that the pit stops are coming up not too uh, long away. We've gone how far into the race are we? We are uh, 20, what's my math, 242, 28 minutes in the race, about another 10 minutes or so before we have the first pit stops 10 minutes being somewhere uh, in the region of eight to nine laps nine laps really isn't it at uh, 70 seconds a lap and the leaders uh, lapping in under 70 seconds now they've cleared that traffic yeah they're going to have two or three laps here where they can really put the hammer down and uh, down into the nines. Both, both of them are last up. 109.872 for Ricky Taylor. That's within a couple of tenths of his fastest lap of the race. Uh, Michel Goitberger, 109.9 on that last lap as well. But heavy traffic. Uh, turn 10 with the two Corvettes trying to find a way past the number 28 Allegra Motorsports GTD Porsche. Sirius 145, XM201, that has been the Wimbledon channel all week, but it's a rest day at the Oil England Lawn Tennis and Croquet Club at the uh, championships today. So we've got the 201 channel on Sirius. Hello to Lee Driggers, who's tuned in there. Thanks for your support, as ever. Still those two BMWs at the head of the field, but now Dirk Werner and Lawrence Van Tour working through traffic are beginning to close on the two BMW M6 GTLMs at the head of the field whilst further back the other two pair of manufacturer GT cars the Fords and the Chevys they're together as well 
within traffic coming onto the Andretti straight now. And Joey Han, the first of that quartet, is trying to drag past the number 15, being the Lexus of Robert Alon. It wasn't easy, even for that very low, very svelte, prototype-esque Ford GT to get by the Lexus. These GT cars are quick in a straight line, Jeremy. Yeah, they certainly are uh, quick in a straight line, and uh, they, they make things very, very difficult uh, for the quicker cars to get past. All of a sudden, uh, Ricky Taylor has managed to eke out quite an advantage now. It's over three seconds from first to second as he's beginning to encounter some traffic once again. Well, we'll be starting to think about those pit stops now at the head of the field. No penalties in the pits. You've got to be clean here with just two, three pit stops for the classes. It'll be three for the head of the field, possibly two for the GT Daytona. Just depends if they get a little bit of help. I'm not sure if Stephen Simpson can hear me. He'll be watching Misha, Misha Goitberg now 1.6 seconds behind the leader number 10. Stephen, a very proud Springbok South African. And tell him that uh, England have won the first test at Lords. South Africa all out for 119, chasing a little over 300. Okay. Moin Ali, six wickets on a fourth day pitch that deteriorated rapidly, saw England lose seven wickets for 43 earlier in the day and Moin Ali spinning the spring box out for just over a hundred. First blood to England in the test match summer. Excellent. That will mean a lot to <laughs> Jeremy Shaw standing next to me and probably not what Stephen needs to say here right now. I apologize to JDC Miller Motorsport. <laughs> Dear, don't distract him before he gets in the car. Um, the, uh, when I was Talking about Michel Goikberg falling back a little bit from Ricky Taylor, scratch that, because on that last lap, Ricky Taylor got some traffic, which uh, Michel Goikberg is working his way through now as well. The gap between the front two, just 1.2 seconds as it came across the line to complete lap 26. And the uh, Lexus lead is about two seconds now over Andrew Davis, doing a super job there to hold on in that second position. And the gap from him back to the third place car of uh, Jeff Siegel is about six and a half seconds. Old style circuit, 21st century endurance racing. Canadian Tire Motorsport Park with the Mobile One Sports Car Grand Prix. IMSA racing at its absolute zenith here this weekend. Magic stuff in all of the classes. And Dirk Werner just trying to put some pressure on the two BMWs in the leading Porsche at the moment. Was closing in, but has dropped in the traffic back to a couple of seconds further away. It's still just a second or so at the head of the field. Sage Karam, Andrew Davis and Jeff Siegel, seven seconds between them. But from Jeff Siegel back to Catherine Leg, which includes Brian Sellers in the middle of them, that's 86 Acura, 48 Lamborghini and 93 Acura. Just two and a half seconds. And then eight seconds back to Christina Nielsen and the Scuderia Corsa Ferrari in sixth position in GT Daytona. Keeping those top five honest, this is exactly what the team will be asking her to do. The 63 car leading the championship at the moment. Meantime, Porsche coming past me is the 911 with his team car right in behind. And then it is actually the 63 of Christina Nielsen as the... Uh, Second and the third and fourth place GT LM cars work their way through the GT Daytona battle. Lamborghini of Corey Lewis closing up on Christina Nielsen as we still have over two hours and six minutes to run. Change for third position too. Uh, Jonathan Bomarito has got past uh, Scott Sharps and number 55 Mazda moving past the Nissan. Didn't see where it happened, but uh, Jonathan Bomarito once again is running super well in this race. They struggled so much during the early part of the weekend at Watkins Glen. They made some, a big breakthrough in terms of setup. 
Second place in GTLM, Martin Tomczyk. Tomczyk in the BMW, number 24, slightly out-fumbled, coming through Moss Corner, going, oh, there's another touch with the Acura. At that time, it was BMW and Acura, and again, it's Catherine Lake drifting over to the right. I wonder if she's got a blind spot on the right-hand side of that car there. Tomczyk was under pressure from Dirk Werner and Lauren Van Turis. They were going through GT Daytona traffic, and at the same time, they had the prototypes coming through. And in fact, it was Bill Orbelin who got the side swipe and the hip check from the 93 car. The leader in GTLM, Martin Tomczyk, has just got through, and the 90 cars come to a halt again. And that is coming out of Moss Corner again on the back straight, just beyond the Mobile One. Pit stop for number 22. 22 is first the first of the, of the leaders pit. into the pit lane, and this is our first scheduled pit stop for our Continental Tire pit lane reporter, Shea Adam. Four new Continental Tires. They still have the stickers on them. A drinks bottle change for Johannes Van Overbeck will not be a driver change this time through, and a whole lot of fuel going into that number 22 ESM. We also have the number 31 who has made its way onto the pit lane. That is the Wheelan Engineering car that won here last year. Of course, last year it was a Corvette. This year it is the Cadillac. Dane Cameron is getting ready to jump into that car. Eric Curran's job is done. Johannes does a beautiful little burnout in the 22 as he leaves his pit box. A nice bit of smoke. Dean Cameron installed within the number 31. They have four new tires for that stop as well. And fuel going in. Other than that, it's uh, an empty pit lane just waiting on the 31. Seems a bit early to do their driver change, but Dane Cameron can handle it. He knows this track, he likes it, and he really likes the number 31 Cadillac. Out goes Dane. One up in Johannes's burnout, I would say. Shea Adam with that Continental Tire pit lane report live from trackside with John Heinov and Jeremy Shaw in the IMSA Broadcast Centre here, overlooking the final corner. So that's the first of the scheduled pit stops. Now we've got to watch the leaders. We've got uh, yeah. two hours and four minutes to go. So well, that's 36 minutes into this race for that first pit stop for the 22 car and the 31 Cadillac. I would have thought that was a bit early for the Cadillac. I would have expected the 31 car to go a little bit deeper. My only thought, Jeremy, they might have been thinking that there was a full course yellow coming with the, with the 90 car stopped. There was a, a little bit of a brush as well between first and second coming through turn nine a lap or two ago in traffic. Misha Goitberg trying to get up the inside as 90 car. into the pit lane again comes the 90. It's not got its headlights on when it's running, but it has its headlights flashing when it's on the pit lane speed limiter. Not sure that that is a very healthy car. We'll leave shit to keep an eye on that as the battle for the leader has just gone past us. And the leader is going to be held up into the first corner. It's the PC car number 20, I think, of Don Yount. And it has been disposed of as in comes Scott Sharp. Scott in the Nismo powered leash here. This one is pulling up in front of Shea Adam. It looks identical to the stop that they did for the 22, the sister car. They have popped open the door, a new drinks bottle for Scott. No driver change and four sticker Continentals going on as well as a whole lot of fuel. Uh, down a little bit further, Mark Goosens has just stepped out of the 90. There is no Renger Van de Zanda getting in the car. Uh, that might be day done, unfortunately. Oh, dear. Uh, there goes Ranger. Ranger just jumped over the wall. Okay, so he was not expecting to get in this soon, but with all the problems, they're going to install him anyway. Two goes back out. Uh, we are seeing the 85 crew getting ready up on the pit wall. That is the JDC Miller Motorsport car from second place, and not yet seeing the 10 of Wayne Taylor racing up on the wall, but the five Mustang sampling car, they are also up on the pit wall. Thank you, Shane. Uh, another lap completed. My goodness, they do go by quickly here, don't yeah. they? And Ricky Taylor already on his 33rd lap, but still only uh, three quarters of a second gap back to the 85. Just a little bit of something coming out from the underneath the 85 there. I'm, I'm hoping that was just the car bottoming out on the bumps and a bit of the skid block coming out from underneath the middle at the rear of the car, which is where, of course, the skid plank is. Fourth place car on pit lane. That's the first of the Mazdas to pit car number 70, along with Christian Fittipaldi in car number five, also on pit lane. 
Shea Adam is on the spot. Fuel and tires for each. The Mazda has not done a driver change, but the five has. Christian Fittipaldi is out, while Robosa has been installed. Mustang sampling car, the uh, most recent prototype race winner. And the Acura has also come onto the pit lane. That is the 86, the one with Uncle Sam on the side. Jeff Siegel is behind the wheel of that one still. He started the race, and he continues to go around. Fuel and tires only for the Mazda, and the 55 should be coming in this time by. They have that pit board dangling down as well. Very, very close on the exit, and the five just beats out Tom Long in the 70. Joao Barbosa, that was a race on the pit lane limit, and a fabulous burnout from Joao Barbosa got him ahead of the dark grey number 70 Mazda of Tom Long. 85 in from second position with Shea Adam. Four new tires, no driver change. Misha is staying behind the wheel as he celebrates the one year anniversary of his son's birth, his son's first birthday. And uh, they are doing four tires. Cannot see if there are stickers on the ones that they have just put on. And a lot of fuel. The first of our Fords has come onto the pit lane. That is the 66. So the first of our GTLM contenders is on the pit lane. Joey Hand qualified the car. He was running in fifth before he came into the pit lane. Dirk Mueller will be taking over. There goes Misha. Now, when this car left for the grid for the uh, first lap around, it did a big burnout and almost lost control of the rear end of the car. Just did the same thing, leaving its pit box very nearly hitting the pit wall of the uh, pit box up ahead, but to managed to get back out. Ford pit stop is fuel, tires, and driver. Car comes off the air jacks. Fueling still going on, though. The longest part of any time. And the leader has come into the pit lane as the number 66 goes out with Dirk Mueller at the helm. The pit board is down for the number 10, Konica Minolta Cadillac DPI VR. <laughs> That's a breathful to say. Uh, Ricky, I believe, will be staying behind the wheel of the car. I do not see Jordan's orange and very distinctive helmet on the pit wall waiting. The car hits its marks. They are doing the left side car first. And uh, not even a new drinks bottle close for Ricky Taylor in this one. But their tire goes, uh, it kind of flew out into the go fast lane. A mechanic manages to get to it before the number 90 visit Florida car goes past me now. Uh, they have changed the right side tires, just waiting on the fuel. This is a pit stop as perfect as you've come to expect from the number 10 team. Fueling is done. Ricky goes back out. And no sign of the 85. Here it comes now. That is a big advantage in the pit stop there for Ricky Taylor and the number 10 Conning and Minolta team. I said there would be pressure in the pit stops. It was one of our keys to the race. And a much quicker pit stop and in lap from Ricky Taylor. And that means that the 10 car gets out with an increased lead. And I need to see whether Jonathan Bomarino got out ahead and is in second position. It's going to have been quite close. The, the uh, 85 car has... No, he is in second place. Scott Sharp in third. Bomarino uh, not as far around the circuit as I thought. The timing screen just taking a, a moment to catch up there. My apologies. But it's now... Nine seconds, the gap between Ricky Taylor, the 10 car, and Misha Goldberg in, 80, in the 85 car in second, Jeremy. Yeah, um, much uh, much faster pit stop there, certainly for that number 10 car. You know, they're well drilled at running at the front. They know exactly what they need to do. The number 85 car teams, yeah, they're still learning a little bit about that number 85 car. It's not uh, yeah, anything like that. Yeah, that cam comparative budgets, let's put it this way, of those two teams, not even close. Uh, but hey, you know, he's still within striking distance. He's uh, well out in in, uh, in second place, Michel Goitberg, and uh, I'm sure he will try the best he can. If he can maintain that position, that'd be great for him at this stage in the race. So. First set of pit stops for all of the leading prototypes. With yeah. uh, now the 10 Cadillac leading by 8.2 seconds from the 85 JDC Motorsport. JDC Miller Motorsport car in second. Now I'm hearing about someone with an issue on the left front, but didn't quite catch the number. And I, it's the five Cadillac. Joao Barbosa with a problem on the left front, and he will pit this time around. Oh. He had lost a position to the number 
number five car had gained a position over number 70 during the pit stops. Well, he's going to lose that coming exactly. in. Uh, first of the GT, Le Mans. Uh, runners to come in is from third. It's the 912 Porsche with Shea Adam. Jimmy Bruni has taken over the 912 Porsche. They did a four tire stop and a whole lot of fuel for that number 912. We are also expecting the four Corvette to come in very soon. Tommy Milner is standing on the wall. He will take over from Oliver Gavin as now the five crew is back up on the pit wall. So yes, they will be coming in soon as well. And indeed, he does make his way into the pit lane. As he drives past me, I'll see if there's any damage to that left front area or if maybe it was just a fluke incident, but there's no damage to the car. The tire did look a bit down, though. The, the five comes in, hits its mark, Joao Barbosa. They're going to give it a little bit more fuel, take advantage of the time while they have it. Old tire is already off, new tire is already on. Air Jack gets thrown back over the wall so they don't run over the pit equipment, and the five is gone. As the 911 comes in, this was our pole sitter, Patrick Keele, already leaps off the wall with a grand gesture and runs around to the driver's side door as the 90 is slow on the front straight all the way over against the wall. The 911 pit stop is going on. Ranger Van de Zandt, meanwhile, the 9 will turn the car off and try to recycle it again. He goes across the start finish line. The yellow flag is waving as Ranger is sitting next to me, silent. 9-11 pit stop is done. I think this might be a full course caution, John. Ranger's actually just stopped the car entirely, and you will be able to hear on my mic when he gets it fired back up, but for right now, there is no life in this car. He's right to the pit wall. The right-hand side of the car is almost touching it. He could not be any further out of harm's way, but he is on the front straight. Now, this car as we've got two cars weaving very close to them that was the 33 that was going by there uh, it was the 5 zero, excuse me the 5 zero, one of the AMGs and it's uh, Cooper McNeil wow. who was there he's got it going again waved yellow flags and still people going past at unabated speed and racing cars around them there needs to be some slaps on the wrist there for drivers. There's at least three waved yellow flags from out of the final corner. And that is just not sensible driving. Martin Tomczyk is the first the BMWs in. I, I misspoke a moment ago about the GT LM pit stops because, of course, it was the 67 Ford that was first in there. And therefore, Ryan Briscoe is the car that is leading, having made its first pit stop. The 911 and 912, I think, have gone behind that uh, sorry, the 66 of Dirk Muller was the first one. That's what's confused me. All right, forget what I've just said in the last 20 seconds as that car's come in. So the Porsches have both now been in, one of the BMWs, and now both of the Fords have been in. Yeah, one of the BMWs, number 25 car, Bill Ogburn, a massive lockup as he came into the pit lane. I, I wonder whether they were trying to bring him, thinking there was going to be a full course caution, made a late call to Billy, threw the car across the road to make that pit entrance, uh, and uh, did, did get it, well, hopefully he got it. That was Jonathan Edwards, time. was it? Or, yeah, it was Jonathan Edwards. Bill Oberlin's still out on the track, uh, I think, brother. Jeremy, yeah. Uh, Tom Jick. Tom Jick then, John yes. Edwards has just gone in that car, so it was the 24 car. Martin Tom Jick brought that yeah. car in. Oh, 912 is back in the pits. Jimmy Bruni back in the pits. Oh, right rear puncture. Right rear puncture. Devoid of Michelin rubber. The wheel has been taken off. Well, this is very bad luck. It was a left front puncture that cost Jimmy Bruni and Lauren Van Tour a week ago a podium position on their first outing together and Jimmy's first outing as a Porsche factory driver. And that was right rear. Now, what I didn't see because it's on the far side of the pits from us was whether there's any damage on the right rear, whether that was contact with another vehicle. Uh, Shea Adam has the pit stops coming in now, Shea. I did not see any damage to that portion of the car, John, as he drove back out on track. Uh, they did clean out the radiator, though, so it might have been sparked from a little off-course adventure. The 24 came in, the BMW from the lead, Bill Oberlin got out, and Alexander Sims got in. Uh, GT Daytona stop. Sage Karam came in out of the lead. Catherine Legs has come in after, out of fifth position. That will leave Brian Sellers in the 48 Lamborghini with a 12 second gap back to Christina Nielsen going long in that 63 car. She'll be trying to get her drive time in as quickly as possible. That promotes the 73 Porsche, the Park Place car. That's the dark grey and red striped car of Patrick Lindsay up into third position ahead of Robert Alon 
who's yet to make his first pit stop as well in the 15 Lexus in fourth position. New fastest lap of the race by Misha Goitberg in car number. So oh, six gear. Who was that? Six gear on the number 10 car. Uh, a problem at the moment, and some kind of gear issues. Meanwhile, a new fastest lap of the race by Misha Goikberg in that car number 85 in second place. He said he, he's trying to track down Ricky Taylor. And one minute 9.254, that's a whole second inside the existing track record. And uh, a magnificent effort by uh, Misha Goikberg. I mean, his best qualifying lap yesterday was a 108.5. He's within the three quarters of a second of that. Six. 63, Christina Nielsen comes in from second position. Ricky Taylor now reports that he's got sixth gear back. Just happened to have a spare cog in his back pocket and flicked it into the gearbox. That sounds like an electronics issue rather than a mechanical issue. Fuel, tyres and driver change for Christina Nielsen, who is out of the car. Alessandro Balzan then being installed by the Scuderia Corsa team. Same thing for the 5-0 AMG. So good at Jeanette will take that car out. Andy Lally takes out the 9-3, the second of the uh, Acuras. So Catherine Lake out of that car. So it's all changed with the pit stops now. All of the prototypes at the head of the field have made their pit stops. All of the GT Le Mans cars have made at least one. And Jimmy Bruni, of course, has dropped all the way down to the tail of that field, having to have a second pit stop. Uh, with that right tyre issue. Misha Goikberg, a 99 in the first sector, has pulled the gap down in the last few laps, which was nearly 10 seconds to under three seconds. Marvellous stuff from Misha Goikberg. He will not drop away from this battle for the lead. Corvettes waiting to come in there, lead the... GT LM category courtesy of the fact that they haven't yet stopped. So they've gone several laps longer than their GT Le Mans competition. And with an hour and 49 minutes to go, this could be important. Start doing the arithmetic, ladies and gentlemen. A 160 minute race and the Corvettes have run 52 minutes so far. Yes, yeah, so Can they... they do it on two stops? Yes. Yeah. There you go. And that's what we talked about in the keys to the race. It's a sprint, but with strategy. And maybe that early Corvette pace, which wasn't quite there, maybe that was strategic as much as it was from the setup of the cars. So now we see a different complexion to the GT Le Mans race. We'll wait till those cars come in for their pit stop. Alexander Sims, by the way, in the leading GT Le Mans car that has stopped the 25 BMW, just put that car's fastest lap of the race in with a 115.0. Still Brian Sellers to pit stop as well for Lamborghini. And Paul Miller racing in the GTD lead, the GT Daytona class with the GT3 spec cars, of course. He's got a comfy lead now. Back to Patrick Lindsay of 23 seconds. But back to the first car that stopped, that is going to be the Audi of Lawson Aschenbach, the 57 Stevenson car. And that is somewhere in the region of 38, 40 seconds. Is Brian Sellers on pit lane, the GTD leader. With, as I say, that 40 second lead back to the first of the cars that has stopped. But again, Jeremy, that's a significant advantage that he has had on his competition. Shea Adam has this Continental Tire pit lane update. Fuels, tires, and driver change for that number 48, Paul Miller Racing, as Brian Sellers gets out. Hands over to Madison Snow, 
And uh, right behind them also is the 73, the Park Place racing car. Jurek Bergmeister making his return to the series after missing Watkins Glen, and we all missed him there too. He comes around the side of the car to get in. He's got five wins at this circuit, so if anyone can do it, Jurek certainly can. Madison Snow, though, still sitting behind the wheel of the car, waiting, waiting, waiting. Deal Pro goes out, he goes away, easily beats out that number 73 as the 28, the Allegra Motorsports Porsche, makes its way down the pit lane as well. So I think that's all of our GTD contenders that we were waiting for. Daniel Morad is up on the wall. He's ready to get in. Bought his team a bunch of Timbits this morning to uh, celebrate Canadian style. Michael De Casada jumping out. They are also doing four tires and fuel as well as their driver change. Still no sign of those Corvettes coming into the pit lane, though. The crew has been standing on the wall for about 15 laps now. So it's anybody's guess as to when they do come in. They were a bit concerned about the refueling time, so stretching as long as they can, saving as much as they can. That's the Corvette strategy of the day. Fueling is still going on on the 20 and they are the only car left on the pit lane. And Daniel Morad has that look of anticipation in his eyes as still fuel going in. Very, very long refueling. Now he's good. He almost runs over his refueler. Thank you, Cher. And things getting interesting at the front of the field as well, John. We've got the two leaders nose to tail now. That gap was eight seconds after the pit stops. Misha Gorgberg has closed that right down. And what's really interesting is directly ahead of those two cars on the road is car number five. That is Joao Barbosa in the, uh, the, the car that won last week at Watkins Glen. It's had that extra stop for a puncture, and it's now in danger, in grave danger, of going a lap down. They won't want to do that. The 15 of Robert Alon in the pit lane. That's a regular stop for that car. It was due one. So Lawson Aschenbach will cycle through to the lead in GT Daytona. And that is genuinely in the lead, that car. The 57 Stevenson uh, Audi. They've already taken a magnificent win with Matt Bell and Robin Liddell in the Continental Tire Sports Car Challenge on Saturday with... The debut, or the maiden victory, excuse me, of the GT4 Camaro. And great run that was for both the guys. I know John Stevenson's not here this weekend. John, I hope you're watching this. You guys did a splendid job yesterday. And the 57 car now leading genuinely on pace What's for that? Stevenson Motorsport. What's that? Oh, Alonso in the pits, is he? Yeah. He just oh. came in the pits. Yeah, Alon's just pitted. That's his first time in the pit lane. No, 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 it's his second time in the pit lane. Because uh, that car led early on with Sage Cat. Oh, not Alon, sorry. No, where, where's the number 14 car? Uh, Scott Pruitt. Pruitt has been twice in the pit lane. Yeah, Correct, so he must, the 14 he car. So that has just changed the pit stop on that. It just said number one, one alongside it, so I must have caught it just before it came into the pit lane. That's confused me, Jeremy. Yeah, we Sorry. need to find out why the number 14 car has been on pit lane, because that was a car that led the early stages of this race. Other than that, it's pretty much the same there with uh, Aschenbach now taking over with an extra stop for the Lexus car number 14. Uh, in, in second place now, then, is number 86 of Jeff Siegel. That's as it was. Uh, then Brian Sells now. Alessandro Balzan in the Ferrari, having taken over from Christina Nielsen, has managed to sneak past Andy Lally, who's relieved at the Catherine Leg in the number 93 Audi uh, Acura. The, uh, yeah, and that Jeff Siegel doing a great job there. Brian Sellers now in third position after the pit stop rounds, stayed in the car. Alessandro Balzan up to fourth position for Scuderia Corsa, just another couple of seconds further back. Hmm, interesting stuff. I'll tell you what, what's interesting to me too, we talked about Michel Goitberg uh, reducing that deficit to Ricky Taylor to, to next to nothing. Uh, what's also interesting, number two car, Scott Sharp, he was only four seconds behind Goitberg after the pit stops. He's now 11 seconds behind. This is Corbett been, in the pits. Yeah, it's, it's Jan Magnussen, and this has been a great run from three and four. We talked about sprinting with strategy, and these guys have gone a huge amount of laps more. And... They, they've now done... Four stays out, too. That's 58 minutes. 
that they have done, and the four car will come in next time around. That means they can do this with just one more stop. Shea Adam is watching the Chevrolet number three stop. Antonio Garcia has one win at this racetrack. He is really, really hoping to add to that today. Ian Magnuson walks very calmly back to the pit wall and just sort of casually jumps up on it. They have four new Michelin tires going on this Corvette. As the driver change is nearly complete, the tire change is done. Now the door gets closed. The engine fires up. The fueling's still going on. They are waiting on fuel only. That is the last part of this equation. As Corvette expected, it might be this weekend. Different fueling restrictor than normal. And they are just waiting on the fuel. Very, very painful. Now goes Antonio back out as the four crew is up on the wall anticipating their car coming in. Misha Goikberg using his local track knowledge brilliantly here. Just half a second behind Ricky Taylor. And this has been a brilliant drive back. Nearly nine seconds after the pit stop has got down to under four tenths now. And it's every lap now that Goikberg is taking time out of Ricky Taylor at the head of the field. Has Shea, he got past him? Uh, he, uh, he's gone by, right in front of us, he's gone by, going in the last corner, and there's a new leader, and it's JDC Miller Motorsport, but he's going to be held up by Joao Barbosa, right ahead well, of him as they go up the top of the rise. Those two leaders have been chasing Barbosa for the last four or five laps. And... So Barbosa Bar is, is desperate not to go a lap down. Turn three and they're going round one of the Acuras. It's the 93 car of Andy Lally, who steers to driver's right. And that's the side he's on, of course. Catherine Lake with a couple of problems. Cars going the other side. And Barbosa in the five car at Moss Corner now with the two leaders <laughs> right in his wheel tracks. And he will not want to go a lap down. This is nothing to do with helping another Cadillac and all about trying to steer on the lead lap of the Mobile One Sports Car Grand Prix coming to you live from Canadian Time Motorsport Park, IMSA Radio from the trackside here in our broadcast booth. Great pass by Goikberg, opportunist pass, set it up coming through nine ah. and made it into ten just as the number four Corvette came into the pit lane and held up the leader. Indeed, indeed that's the point, held up the leader inadvertently, of course, because they won't want to, they want to, they'll want to help a, a fellow GM brand. But number four car peeled off just as Taylor was committed to trying to go around the outside of him at turn nine to get the inside to turn ten. And hearing again from our colleagues at TV, thanks to Bubba Clark for keeping me involved, there's a piece of debris on the circuit near the Canadian Tire Bridge, so we'll need to keep an eye for that as well. Fuel tyres and driver change for the four. Tommy Milner is already back out on the circuit. So after the round of GT Le Mans pit stops, Alexander Sims leads for the 25 BMW. Up from second place is where he went into the pit. Patrick Pele up from third to second in the 911 Porsche. Jonathan Edwards in the 24 BMW was leading before the pit stop cycle, now in third position. Dirk Muller up to fourth in the 66 Ford, ahead of his teammate Richard Westbrook, courtesy of an extra stop from Jimmy Bruni for a punctured right rear tyre. And he's now fallen down to eighth position behind Antonio Garcia in the three Corvette in sixth and Tommy Milner in the four Corvette in seventh. That's how the GTLM class looks. In GT Daytona, Lawson Aschenbach is the leader and he is currently climbing the hill at the uphill right-hander at turn three. Jeff Siegel some 12 seconds behind, but he's got six seconds in hand over Brian Sellers. But Brian, just with a second or so ahead of Alessandro Balzan, 57 Audi, 86 Acura, 48 Lamborghini. And then the 63 bright red and white Scuderia Ferrari, uh, Corsa Ferrari of Alessandro Balzan. And the head of the field, though, this battle is absolutely spellbinding. Misha Goikberg has pulled away to about a second. Now, is there tactics being played out here, Jeremy? The number 10 car, still, I mean, they're still running a brilliantly quick pace at 109.6 for Ricky Taylor, but 109.2 for Misha Goikberg and Steven Simpson still to come in that car. Yeah, it's an absolutely magnificent job he's doing. He's, he's being super cool and calm through the traffic. He can't find a way past 
the Barbosa car, car number five, which will be frustrating because he'll want to. Uh, he, 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 this this way, right, as it is right now, he's going to concentrate directly the car in front of him because he wants to get get past him to put him a lap down. And also behind him, with Ricky Taylor snapping at his heels. This is great stuff. Brilliant drive there by Goitberg. You wouldn't know this is the first time he'd done this, i.e. dicing for the lead of a major, major motor race. He's never done that before. This is brilliant stuff. Brilliant stuff. And Ricky Taylor now with the number four Chevy Corvette of Tom Milner. Tommy Milner between him and the leader as they go on to the back straight. Misha Goikberg, by the way, has not got past Joao Barbosa. <laughs> Last lap for Barbosa, a 1.10.3. So it won't be long before he starts to actually slow down the well, progress no, no, of the No, no, he is definitely slowing him down, John. There's no question in my mind about that. Let's go down to the pit lane. Two stops for the 14 Lexus. Shea Adam has this Continental tyre pit lane update to tell us why. Well, for both cars, they haven't been extra stops. They've been extra penalties. Ah. One, one of the cars left with pit equipment attached, and uh, one car has had to serve two drive-through penalties. One was for speeding, and one was for something that they're not entirely sure about. At least that was the line I was given, so it's something that they're embarrassed about. Uh, but, yeah, not a stellar day for the Lexus team. Spinning the tyres whilst on the jacks is what we're hearing. Yeah, that's frustrating for the uh, team. Getting because on there's the... Been little mistakes there yeah. that, that, that they've been making this season, but the, the, the good news is the car is fast and, uh, and yeah, the, things are coming their way. Keys to the race, we said pit pressure, no penalties. Well, that's the guys mm -hmm. doing the service and the driver has their part to have their part to play as well. Jeremy, you've got to be Absolutely. good on the in lap, get down to the speed limit, but you've got to execute and getting it fired up and the wheel spinning before you're on the ground is an absolute no-no. Yes, it is. And it would have been Scott Pruitt, wouldn't it? Because uh, he's the guy who took over that car. He should know, that's for sure. So Brian Sellers, third position, just four seconds now behind Jeff Siegel. Just beginning to eke away a tiny bit at that second place car. Brian Sellers staying in the car. Madison Snow was over the wall at the pit stop. One or two of you tweeting at IMSA Radio to say, are you sure that Madison didn't get in the car? Well, you were eagle-eyed if you saw that because Madison was over the wall, but he was just giving Brian Sellers, his teammate, a new drinks bottle. And as he was over the wall, he had to have his helmet, etc. on. And you are allowed to have a driver help a driver, and that does not count as one of your over-the-wall allocation. Piece of debris just offline, coming up to turn number eight beyond the Canadian Tower walkover bridge on the end of the back straight. It's off to driver's right, and I think enough offline that it's going to be left there for the moment. Uh, an hour and 33 minutes still to go, Jeremy, and this one has been an absolute cracker. Misha Goikberg by six tenths of a second. It'll be pit stops at the next pit stop, should I say. Goikberg will hand over to Simpson and Ricky presumably will hand over to Jordan Taylor. Is that the opportunity for the number 10 team to get back in the lead? We know that they are very quick indeed in the pit stops. Yeah, indeed so. But then uh, it'll be up to Stephen Simpson to try and track him down again. And we've seen that Michel Goikberg can make that pass. So this is going to be an enthralling battle all the way through. We're only, uh, we've got an hour and 33 minutes remaining. So an hour and 15 minutes in the books. We are, are over half distance. And we'll be expecting uh, the second round of pit stops for the prototype cars uh, in uh, it'll be a little while yet when it'll be uh, another 10, 12 laps, 12, 15 laps. This is IMSA Radio live from trackside at Canadian Time Motorsport Park, as we are for every IMSA WeatherTech Sports Car Championship race and for the Continental Tires and most of the support races as well. The only broadcast team with a full squad at every event. 90.7 FM around the circuit here and scanner frequency 454. That's our season long place to listen. Trackside. Hello to you on XM201 and Sirius 145 around the world at IMSA.com and the IMSA app, as well as with IMSA TV. Once again, bringing sound and vision together, perfectly synchronized for those of you in Canada 
and the rest of the world outside the US. Ooh, Goldberg held up there by the Ford. Uh, going through turn two, he's able to duck, a, duck around him as number 67 car. That's Richard Westbrook, moves over the lane through on the inside, open to turn three. Heads up driving for both of those two. No change in the lead. Those of you in the US, FS1 is where you can see the pictures and listen to our colleagues at Fox with uh, Brian Till and uh, Justin Bell in the pits here. Uh, excuse me, Jamie Howe. And the team making the race call from Charlotte. So, Misha Goitberg has his lead cut to just four tenths of a second. He's in traffic again, and he's just got to be... The leader has always got to little be, be a bit circumspect. And Ricky Taylor's right on him. Look outside the window. There's less than a car's length between them as they come out the final corner. Lots of traffic, lots of fast cars in there as well. Jean Barbosa are actually just getting away from the leaders at the moment, and that might not be the worst thing for Misha Goitberg because he's waking up some of these back markers. They're seeing the blue flag, and that might just help Misha as he comes onto them. The problem is there's so much of this track that is a one-groove circuit, and Misha now diving down the inside of the Lexus number 14. That is Scott Pruitt aboard that car. And he's pulled out just enough of a gap to be able to pick a line past the Ford GT through turn four. Now in behind the number 50 AMG of Gunnar Jeanette. And he's got the Ford between himself and the chasing Ricky Taylor. Went up to almost a second in traffic there for a moment. Misha Goitberg doing exactly what his teammate Stephen Simpson did at Watkins Glen International a week ago, not risking the car. Jeremy in the keys to the race in our Michelin countdown to green. When we were talking about pushing without risk in traffic, says you've got to be decisive in traffic. You have, you've got to make sure that the car you are passing knows you are there and knows where you are going by. And the leader held up again on the exit of turn one. That's cost him a little bit of pace. It's a 73 Park Place Porsche. That has held him up. York Bergmeister there. This is not deliberate from any of these guys. They're running their own race, remember. Mm. And with a and 1,300 or 1,400 kilo GT car, Jeremy, once you've committed to your line, there's not much you can do there. Meantime, battle for second position in GTLM. Patrick Peele has got Jonathan Edwards right on his tail through turn number eight. <laughs> the mid-engined 911 RSR, and Edwards goes to the right-hand side in the final corner. That's going to be tight, but he'll run wide. Pele does the over and under, side by side. They cross the line, they nearly touch. The Porsche was a millimetre ahead, and is still scored in second position. The BMW tries to squeeze down, going in the first corner, but can't get it done. Pele and Jonathan Edwards having a cracking scrap, brilliant driving. Well-matched drivers and cars, and here comes Edwards again. Tries to go to driver's left, that's the long way around on the uphill at turn three. Surely can't find the grip out there, no he can't, and drops back. This is second place in GTLM, Alexander Sims and the 25 BMW, five seconds further up the road. Well, this Porsche has really found its feet this year, moving the engine forward, that new diffuser sticking out the back. And a new exhaust as well that makes that flat six sound even better. Is that possible? Yes, it is. Come and hear it trackside. It's awesome. The BMW M6 GTLM in its final year of competition. The M8 already under development and will debut at the Rolex 24 Daytona. This is a breathless race, isn't it? I don't know where to look, Jeremy. I don't know where to look. No, it's magnificent. Exactly what we want. What a job he is doing. A second Absolutely down, he's pulled superb. out the gear. Yep, yeah, he's, he's, uh, he's grateful right now because, that, as you say, Barbosa's just a little bit ahead of him. Uh, well, maybe 10, 12 car lengths they come into the final corner here. Uh, and because uh, the, of those two battling amongst themselves and being held up a little bit, I think, by the number five car in general, that has allowed the third place car which is Scott Sharp to close uh, 5.7 seconds the gap, that 6.1 seconds as they come across the line. But that gap was out to 12 seconds for a while. That has come down between second and third. 
but it's intense concentration by, uh, well, everybody at the stage of this race, but it is particularly impressive, I'm going to say it again, for Mr. Goitberg, because he is not a professional driver. All these other guys around him are. Lexus number 15 then in traffic at the moment with a bird's eye view of a pass for the lead. No, sorry, wrong Porsche. Another BMW going past the Porsche, but it's not the Porsche he was looking for. That was the 24 BMW passing the 54. That's one of the GTLM cars. The 24 in the hands of John Edwards. Alex Sims, Alexander Sims, his teammate, leading in the 25. GTLM M6. Pile now has dropped down to four and a half seconds behind the leader, but has got a nine tenths lead over John Edwards in the 24 car. And the leaders in the race and in the prototype category are together again as Misha Goikberg just loses the back end of the Oringa, catching up again with the Number five, Joao Barbosa, who's just managing to steer on the lead lap into Moss Corner at the far side of the racetrack from us. And Ricky Taylor tries to find a way to get the power on just slightly earlier than the leader ahead of him. <laughs> yeah, he's got a slight, a slight advantage on, on torque coming out of the corners, does the uh, number 10 car, but the number 85 car is very fleet through the corner. It is, isn't it? The Cadillac with a reduced amount of wing angle mandated by the series from the last race. But I don't think there's been any performance adjustments since the sale in six so hours of the Glen. So effectively running as we were a week ago. That's good to report. Uh, the rest of the prototype category, by the way. Oh, change. No, 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 sorry. Uh, that's Xiao Barbosa. Is yes. about to get past side by side, both sides of the Acura. And finally, Joao Barbosa goes a lap down, caught a glimpse of a dark prototype in front of Misha Goitberg. I thought he'd just gone past him, and therefore I thought it was Ricky Taylor. But in fact, it was Joao Barbosa going a lap back in the number yeah. five Cadillac. And now Ricky Taylor's got the issue and pit stops are due for the leaders now, Jeremy. Yeah, fairly soon, not too long, that's for sure. And uh, we, we will see, probably see the uh, the Nissan was, was the first car to come in on the first round. That was after 29 laps. We've now got 62 laps in the books and those uh, Nissans are still out there. So uh, it, that was a great opportunity maneuver there by uh, Goitberg because the number five car was held up just a little bit by one of the I think it was one of the Acuras, and uh, he dived around the outside, and Goitberg made sure he left him plenty of room around the outside of turn three, really heads up driving. Now, can he pull away? Number five had a valve core issue. Ooh, that was unfortunate. Uh, hearing from our colleagues at Continental Tire, thank you for passing that along. That's why that car had to pit. Maybe, maybe was that contact with somebody else? It's Possibly. Un unusual for it to, OK, well, now... Taylor's got through yeah, now. I think Barbosa. probably Barbosa let him go. Yeah, because, once you've lost the, the lap to the leader, there's yeah. not much point in fighting that hard Partic with those that come through behind. Particularly when they're both Cadillacs. I'm not sure there's, uh, you know, hands of friendship across the ocean between those two teams. No, but there is mutual respect, and uh, they know what's, what side their bread is buttered on. Now, the Jimmy Bruni driven 912, remember that's had a right rear tyre issue, had to come for an extra pit stop, fighting back now with Jimmy Bruni. Still seems odd to see Jimmy Bruni in a Porsche and in the white, black and red overalls. He's got uh, Tom Milner, Tommy Milner right ahead of him. And that is the battle for seventh position in GT Le Mans. An hour and 22 minutes to go. Pit stops due from the leaders. Ricky Taylor with his fastest second sector, trying to keep Misha Goikberg honest, who leads the motor race. JDC Miller Motor Sport leading. And here comes the start of the prototypes. And again, it's the number 22 Nissan, Shea Adam. As Shea Adam has this Continental tyre pit lane report. Johannes Van Overbeck gingerly pulls into the pit box. They are giving new tyres to this number 22 ESM car, though. But it is now time for Pipo Durrani to take his first full season 
Hughes and the start. He is no longer the third driver. He is up to the second driver. The 31 wheel in engineering matches the 22 as it did last time. Dane Cameron will be getting fuel and tires. No driver change for that car as uh, Pipo is now installed. This is a guy who had never been to this track before earlier in the week and he decides to run it to figure out the layout of the course. 2.5 miles and a lot of hills. He was kind of regretting that a little bit later on. Fueling is done. Out goes Pipo and they should beat out the 31 back out onto the fast lane as indeed yes and there is applause from the ESM crew good stop by them they are now expecting the two new men where Scott Sharp will be handing over to Ryan Dial peels off and out of turn number nine and comes in the pit lane hits the brakes meantime a cracking scrap uh, going on in the for the seventh position in GTLM still that Corvette of Tommy Milner trying to hold back Jimmy Bruni Jimmy in an absolute tear through the field since that issue with the right rear. He'll be so annoyed that that has happened. Jeremy? The number five car, Jar Barbosa, really slowed up on that last lap. I don't know why. It didn't seem to use all the road coming out of, here, out of the final car. Let's keep our eyes on, on that number five car because he dropped back a long, long way now from the two overall race leaders having gone that lap down. Nissan and Mazda pit stop share, Adam. For the two, Scott Sharp is out, Ryan Dial is in, fuel and tires for that car as well, and the number 70 Mazda comes in, that's the gunmetal grey car, as uh, Ryan Dial does an eh, burnout, uh, back out on the pit lane, and the 70 Mazda service is now done, fuel, tires, and Joel Miller behind the wheel. Again, not a great burnout from these two, we've seen some pretty spectacular ones so far today. The number 55 Mazda will be doing here shortly as well, Jonathan Bomarito getting out, Tristan Nunez getting in. Oh, this is an absolute cracker, isn't it? Yep. Misha Goikberg by two seconds now. Remember, the 85 car did not get turned around as quickly as the number 10 in the first set of pit stops. Second set of pit stops are in play now at the front of the field. But the 10 and the 85 were the two cars that went the longest, Jeremy, of those prototypes in the first round. 55 comes in out of third position. Shea Adam, Jonathan Bomberito already out of that car with a new set of Continental tyres about to go on it. They do a staggered stop for the 55 Mazda with the right front going on the same time as the left rear. You see what I mean? The fueling still going in for that car. Tristan Nunez is getting a clean up the windshield as well for that car while they're doing the fueling. Starts off the jacks, fueling is done. A bit of a delay before Tristan Nunez. That's a better burnout, Tristan. He goes sideways for about 10 feet before finally getting it back under control. We are expecting the 85 in very soon as well. Mechanics are not yet standing on the wall, but they are sitting on their new tires to go on. And Stephen Simpson has his helmet on as well. That's Continental Pit Lane report from Shea Adam live on IMSA Radio around the track at 90.7 FM here at Canadian Time Motorsport Park. Our full season scanner frequency 454. And on XM201 and Sirius 145 this weekend. Welcome to you if you are out and about listening in in your preferred form of transport. Around the world at IMSA.com and on the IMSA app, it's IMSA Radio and IMSA.TV together. Sound and vision perfectly synchronised in the last hour and 19 minutes of the Mobile One Sports Car Grand Prix, our annual trip north of the border to Canada. And once again, Canadian Tire Motorsport Park, two and a half miles, is giving us much more than that two and a half miles worth of action and entertainment. The leaders split by traffic into turn eight and very, very close call for Misha Goikberg, who stayed aboard, is still aboard rather, the number 85, Stephen Simpson. He's in the pit lane. Both of them. Both the leaders in and almost, a, almost a crash as they break to the pit lane speed limit. Ricky Taylor was millimetres away from the back of the 85 car and made up quite a bit of ground as Misha Goikberg peels off first into his JDC Miller Motorsport pits. Ricky Taylor rumbles past me on the pit lane. Stephen Simpson already over the wall waiting as Misha falls out of the car. 
he goes flat down on the pit lane and then stands back up. His job is done. He's waiting for his seat insert. Four tires already changed on that number 85, just waiting on fuel. A little bit further up the pit lane, Jordan Taylor, his helmet disappears behind uh, the wheel of that number 10, Konica Minolta car. They have done two of the tires on that car so far. Now the other two are going on the right side tire, just finishing. 85 is still getting fuel. The delay on the belts cost them greatly on the 85 as Misha has gotten out Steven Simpson behind the wheel. Now he goes past, but the 10 is going to beat them out easily of the pit lane. And that's that's fuel flow. That's fuel flow on those cars or less fuel being taken from the 10 because the there was a bit of delay on the uh, on the belts on the 85 car, but it was done and the door was shut as the fuel probe came out. So the longer stop there for the 85 is on fuel flow. Now, I have to say, I haven't looked at the table on that, so I apologize, but I'm sure someone on the collective will. So a shorter stop from the Cadillac team, courtesy of either less fuel going in or the fuel going in at a faster rate on the 6.2 engine car. Yeah, IMSA works very hard to try and make sure the pit stops are of an equal length bet between all of the different cars, depending on, on their fuel consumption, fuel tank size, with the restrictor nozzle size. Uh, they work very, very hard on that. Uh, and that's why I said, Jeremy, it's either that or they put less fuel in. And I don't or, know the question. Or, or they got the refueling nozzle in, you know, planted more quickly. I didn't see be. the 10 one going in, but I did the 85, and that, that didn't seem to have an issue going in. Yep. They were just waiting for that to happen. And it was interesting that they had a problem with the belts uh, on Stephen Simpson going in, but it was actually didn't cost them any real time because the fuel was still going yeah. in and the door was closed at the moment the fuel probe came out. The piece of debris, by the way, that was on the back straight on the right-hand side beyond the Canadian Tire walkover bridge is now on the left-hand side. It's been moved, um, and it's just on the edge of the circuit on the left-hand side. So Jordan Taylor leads, having taken over the lead of the Mobile One Sports Car Grand Prix on the pit stop cycle. Still one more pit stop to go for those cars. They cannot make it to the end from here. Correct. Correct, they will need one more pit stop here. All of the uh, prototype leads will need one more pit stop. Significant uh, to me as well, Jeremy, that they have pitted on the same lap there yes. as well. I I I indeed so, and the number 22 car on that, uh, this exchange of pit stops came out behind the 55, so they'd exchanged positions after the first round of pit stops and they've done the same now the other way around so the 55 car up into fourth position now that is the Mazda with Tristan Nunez aboard and he is going to try and track down uh, Randy Yeah, he's just got purple sector uh, sector two for Tristan Nunez he's on a quick lap here yeah he's on a very quick lap indeed Let's recap the other categories before it starts going bonkers at the head of the field again. 1098 for Tristan Nunes. Let's GTD, Lawson Aschenbach for Stevenson Audi. Now with a 16 second lead from Acura number 86 in the hands of Jeff Siegel, 57 from 86. In third place, the red and white Ferrari, half a second behind. Alessandro Balzan has just lost that position, I think, to Jeff Siegel a couple of laps ago. And Brian Sellers is just another four tenths behind. Jeff Siegel knows that Ferrari very well, of course, having been a Ferrari driver uh, not so very long ago. So 57, leading by 16.1 seconds from Jeff Siegel in the Acura, won three races for Ferrari last year. 86 then by half a second from 63, by half a second from 48, by two tenths of a second to the 93. So second down to fifth, just on a second between them, and they're coming past us now with the number five of Schwab Barbosa just going past that battle for second, third, fourth, and fifth in GT Daytona into turn one now. Another cracking scrap from the GT cars. And a new fastest lap of the race. Not by Tristan Nunez, indeed. It is by... Well, it was by... Pe I thought it was by Pipo Durrani. No, Joel Miller yeah, in a kind of a 70 has just, uh, yeah, no, it was Pippa Durrani, right, 9124, nine, nine, right, exactly, by Pippa Durrani. Uh, and a good lap also there by uh, Joel Miller and Dane Cameron, both now down into the nines, as they are uh, chasing to make up for, particularly Dane Cameron, uh, a uh, pretty 
D Eric Cohen really struggled in the first stint in that number 31 car, but Dane Cameron is charging hard. He's now only three seconds behind Joel Miller. That gap between those two cars was 17 seconds before their last round of pit stops. And number five car, by the way, did come out of its pits. Uh, still a lap down. Uh, the uh... Correct. In eighth position. Yeah. Uh, absolutely. At uh, GTLM, we said GTD. GTLM, Alexander Sims for BMW in the number one position in the 25 car. Has two seconds over Patrick Peeler. He's just been chipping away until that last lap when Alex pulled a three-tenth gap back out on uh, the 911 of Patrick Peeler, the number 911. He's got two seconds now on John Edwards in the 24 BMW in second for Rahal Letterman Lanigan. Uh, Dirk Muller is 40, 40 seconds further back for the first of the two Chip Ganassi racing cars. The 66 has its 67 teammate about four seconds in arrears. Tony Garcia in the number three Corvette is half a second further back. Then it's 18 and a half seconds back to Tom Milner. And uh, Tommy's got, what, three tenths, four tenths back to Jimmy Bruni. That battle has been on since Jimmy Corton, but he hasn't been able to get by. So that's the top... That's the eight positions in GTLM. Haven't mentioned Prototype Challenge for a little while. It is James French in ninth position overall, leading that category by some distance. Has lapped in hand now on the number 20 in second place. It's the 26 James Vance in third position, and he's lapped back as well. And at the head of the field, after the second round of pit stops, Jordan Taylor leads by 2.3 seconds, the number 10, Gloss Black Cadillac ahead of Stephen Simpson in second, but Stephen has just put in the fastest third sector of the race to pull that back to 2.2 seconds. Yeah, Stephen Simpson last time around a woman at 9.47. Uh, on the uh, previous lap, Jordan Taylor set the fastest lap of the number 10 cars race as, a, as an identical time, woman at 9. Point, actually, yeah, woman at 9.47. 471 identical, to 474. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Close enough. Uh, Ryan DL, by the way, is in a rather lordly third position in the number two Ligier Nissan, the Patron ESM car. He's 13, caught it 14 seconds behind Stephen Simpson in second, but he's better part of three and a half seconds ahead of Tristan Nunez. But Tristan is putting in some very, very good lap times. He's got four and a half seconds uh, ahead of Pipo Durrani in the 22, who's got three seconds ahead of the number 7-0 Mazda and another quick lap by Jordan Taylor, 109.4, but 108.9 from Steven Simpson. New fastest lap of the race as the number 90 car has stopped again. But the battle at the head of the field is extraordinary, exhilarating and captivating. It's down to 1.1 seconds now for Steven Simpson, who's just taken six tenths out of the leader in traffic in the first sector. Yeah, new lap record then once again for Steven Simpson. What a great battle this is at the front of the field. That Orica uh, chassis really does work well. It was a brilliant first hit by Misha Goikberg. Uh, and Stephen Simpson now continuing that work. He is uh, generally the quicker of the two drivers, as he's shown by just going slightly faster than Misha did in that first stint. And he's going to do the best he possibly can to track down Jordan Taylor. Now, remember, at the start of the race, track temperature was well over 100 degrees Fahrenheit, now down to 96. The ambient has actually gone up a little bit to 72. It was at 69. We've got some thunderheads in the area. They're high and they're to the west of us at the moment as the 90 car has crawled its way back into pit lane and Jimmy Bruni is back in the pit lane for a much more standard looking pit stop share, Adam. Fuel and tires only for that number 912 and it was exactly according to plan. The crew had been up on the wall. Now he can't go to the end from here. 68 minutes, he'll need a splash before the end, but that is a third stop, of course, after that right rear tire issue for the 912 car. Let's uh, have a quick word with the man of the moment from the first part of the race. Knows this track very well. Misha Goitberg out of the number 85 JDC Miller Motorsports, Orica Gibson. Misha, great job out there. Were you just smiling the whole time, especially when you were leading? I didn't have time to smile. I was just hanging on and uh, trying to get the car in one piece to my teammate. So it was definitely a 
challenging, but uh, it's very challenging to pass here. So everything everything comes down to uh, the timing of the traffic. So I think that's what uh, we have to work with going forward here. Fingers crossed for Stephen, and happy first birthday for your kid. Thank you very much. I appreciate it, Shay. Major Goikberg using his local knowledge to good effect. Now Stephen Simpson has taken the battle back to Cadillac. This is what we were hoping for in this new prototype category from IMSA. Brand new for 2017, remember? This is a formula that is still finding its feet with the open engine regulations for DPI and open aero regs against the spec cars of LMP2. And this is exactly the battle that we'd hoped for. I'll be honest, Jeremy, I didn't think we'd see it this quickly and this closely in the season. The IMSA technical staff, well, chapeau to them. Absolutely brilliant job. This is the kind of racing I thought it would take maybe a season or a season and a half for us to develop. Yeah, I agree. It's been uh, spellbinding, hasn't it, this, this race? And the two leaders now absolutely nose to tail as they come across the start and finish line to complete 77 laps and just 66 rem minutes remaining in this race. And that pits is all going to come down to his final pit stops, perhaps, unless Stephen Simpson can use his pace. He's got a slight pace advantage. Uh, he can go a little bit quicker over a lap than number 10 car, but finally way past Jordan Taylor. I tell you what, that's going to be no easy, easy work. No, not at all. That is going to be a proper old-fashioned uh, gloves-off street fight. It might come down to maybe who can uh, either save the most fuel or have to put the least amount of fuel in at the final pit stop. It's a very good point, Jeremy, because I think the 10 car came in before it needed to because I think they had a, at least a couple of laps uh, and possibly more in the tank. That car yeah. has been very fuel-efficient. Yeah, on the first... Well, I don't know, on the first... Could be on the, on the first stint, number 10 car ran 34 laps, number 85, five car uh, ran 33 laps, so one lap less. Second stint around, it was 34 again for the uh, number 10 car and 35 laps ah. for the number 85. So okay. that would suggest not a lot of difference between them. Okay. So that was this 85 car going a lap longer rather than the 10 car coming in a lap shorter. OK, well, that's going to make life very, very interesting indeed. Less than 65 minutes to go. Don't even contemplate for a pico second leaving this one alone. If you need a cup of tea or something a little stronger, send someone to get it for you. Take your eyes off this one for a moment and it'll all kick off again. The leaders in heavy traffic at the far end of the circuit from us through Moss Corners and they're together again and again there's a P car ahead of them. Have you said that earlier on today in heavy traffic? Oh yeah. I tell you what, I mean, it's just, there's just a, not a moment to relax during this two hours and 40 minute race. It'll be absolutely exhausting. We heard Misha Goyberg, he was clearly uh, pretty tired out uh, yet, yes, these cars are quite physical to drive, but are also mentally taxing to drive, particularly uh, here at Canadian Time Motorsport Park, where there is just not a moment to relax. One of the GTD leaders on pit lane, that is car number 86. That would be Jeff Siegel pulling out of second position. I think that's allowed Alessandro Balzan to go through. The gap still, Lawson Aschenbach, that Stevenson Motorsports Audi, Still, still about 16 seconds ahead of the uh, battle that was raging for second place between Lally, Sellers and Balzan. Balzan having got past Sellers a little while ago, but that battle continues. Not far behind them is Jerome Mull for change racing in number 16 Lamborghini. And then Jens Klingman in number 96 BMW trying to get himself up into contention as well. Shea Adam was watching those stops. Fuel, tires, and a driver change as Jeff Siegel jumps out from behind the wheel of the Acura. Still weird to say Acura for him. And Oz Negri has taken over. Good burnout from the 86. It was number three on the side of the car when it pulled into its pit box because Balzan had already overtaken on track. Let's see what Ozzy can go claim back. No, no, no. Oh, one, two, three, four, wide for a moment. And the lead changes. Stephen Simpson forces his way through on the inside. And the turn in, a turn in. I was going to say the braking area, but it barely is. <laughs> for that, it's a lift. And a, Close your eyes and hold on and hope for the best. Fantastic opportunistic manoeuvre from the South African. And he goes ahead at the completion of lap number 80. 
the JDC Miller Motorsport car came from a very long way back, but Jordan Taylor was blocked for a moment by the 54 Porsche and one of the Fords. And I think Simpson just dropped the Continental tyre onto the grass there yeah. as he went through, throwing up a little bit of dust. There was room, just enough room, but he made it work. And Stephen Simpson, who knows about being squeezed, he was tight up to the wall of the restart with the number five car at the uh, restart of the Glen, wasn't he? A week or so ago. Well, he knows exactly how wide that Oregon chassis is, and he played that one to perfection. He did, didn't he? I tell you what, we've got a great battle going on now for uh, fourth, third position now, because Randy Yell all of a sudden has lost the gap he had. Well, no, he scratched that. Tristan Nunez, uh, Nunez has been tracking Ryan Diel, number 255, but Piper Durrani, number 22 car, he's closed right in and on those two as well over the last couple of laps. GTD leader in the pitch here, Adam, has this continental tie for the report. Fuel and tires for Lawson Oshbach, the number 57, the Stevenson Audi. That 57 already has a win this weekend, but that came from the sister car in the Continental Tire Sports Car Challenge. The first two people over to congratulate their teammates that weekend were Lawson and Andrew. So they will be hoping to return the favor this weekend. Fuel still going on. The tire change is already done. I only see two Continentals left on the pit lane. Those would be from the left-hand side because the right-hand side ones have already been returned. Just waiting on the fuel is Lawson very, very patiently. Now he goes. Good stop for the number 57. Andy Lally pitted with an hour and two minutes to go in the Acura. I reckon they can probably go from there. It'll be tight at an hour, but I think they can go from there. So anyone who stops from now on in a GT Daytona car, should be able to get to the end. It's not the case for the leaders. There's still one more stop for the leaders. That second stop was not their last stop. The interest for me, Jeremy, is in GT Le Mans, as once again, we get a little bit of jigging and porking. 73 Park Place Porsche with two AMGs in very, very close attendance. Jerome Blakemolen and Tristan Vautier are there. And, oh, add in, there's a third one in there as well, actually, which must be laps down. Vautier trying to come back through, but the Park Place Porsche holding sway at the moment. Also in there, the number 14 Lexus of Jack Hawksworth. So a great gaggle of GT Daytona cars there at the moment. Just going back to GTLM for the moment, the interest for me there in pit stops is have Chevy and the Corvette teams got their sums right in terms of their fuel consumption, because I think they're hoping to go on just one more stop from here. I'm not sure about the other ones. Shit, Adam. Jeff Siegel, fresh out of the 86. Uh, you were working hard out there. Coming to Canadian Tire Motorsport Park, it's your first time here in a while. How's the track feel? Yeah, I mean, uh, last last time I was here was in a Continental Challenge GS car. It's a whole different animal in a GT3 car. I mean, it's big, big commitment. In a GS car, turn one is a braking zone, and here you're just lifting a little bit. So um, it, it's a lot to hang on to, and the traffic is just crazy. The closing speeds and the interaction between the GT cars and the prototypes, it's uh, it's mayhem. I, I cannot believe that we haven't gone full course yellow yet, but uh, cars running well. Um, you know, we'll see what Oz can do with it. I think... Uh, we're hanging on to rear tires a little bit here, but you know, an hour left and we're in a very good position, so we'll just try and close it out. Sister car has two wins. It's your turn today. Good luck. Yeah, definitely. I mean, we want to win, that's for sure, but uh, Podium's been within reach a couple of times and been snatched away in kind of cruel fashion, so uh, we'll just take a good finish. I mean, a win would be fantastic, but a good finish to kind of get our mojo back. Sure, Adam, down in the pit lane. Chevy Corvette number three in the pits along with the 67 Chip Ganassi car and John Edwards in the 24 BMW. And I think they will think now they can get to the end Correct. from here. They will be able to stretch that fueler. So if there is a full course caution, they have completed their final pit stop of the day. Yeah. Richard Westbrook, we know, has got pink fluffy bunny ear slippers. Oh, and tied up against the pit wall. Two AMGs together. Tristan Vortier was the man closest to the wall. And he was being pushed there by the 33 of Jerome Blakeable, and then they're bashing fenders 
as they go down towards turn one, and that was for fifth and sixth position with Gunnar Jeanette in another AMG GT, the 50 car right ahead of them. And that was very close indeed again to the solid concrete pit wall. Magnificent, isn't Brilliant. it? Brilliant. I mean, there's battles absolutely everywhere up and down the field. And we talked a few minutes ago about that battle for third place overall. Number two car holding off to 55 and number 22. Well, uh, Joel Miller, number 70 car, is closing in as well. That gap not so long ago was over five seconds. Now only two between number 22 and the number 70. And for some reason, Dane Cameron has been struggling. I don't know when he was spin a while ago because he, he suddenly lost quite a bit of ground. He was only about three seconds behind number 17. All of, went, all of a sudden, it went out to about a dozen seconds. So I didn't see what happened there. But he is still on the lead lap and the last car on the lead lap in seventh position for car number 31. Stephen Simpson has stretched the lead to 3.2 seconds. I reckon he needs a little more than that to make up for the difference in the pit stops. The battling AMGs Jesus. have headed to the pit lane. 75 and 33, both in. Shea Adam with this Continental Tire Pit Lane report. For the 33, it will be fuel and tires only. They are leaving Jerome Blake-Mullen behind the wheel as expected. The 50 will be coming in this time by. They do that separately lapped because the two cars are team cars and they would get in the way of each other. So Bill Riley puts them on staggered strategy stops. Fuel, the last thing to go into this number 33 with an eight showing up on the side of the car. As we also have the GTLM leader, the 25 is in for its pit stop as well as the number 911 fuel and tires for both of those cars the 63 scuderia cross ferrari comes in beyond the number 33 amg gt3 which just now leaves ahead of the 75 tristan vodier still behind the wheel it is fuel and tires for the 63 no driver change fuel and tires for the 25 no driver change and fuel and tires for the 911 no driver change the 25 has already been lowered off of its air jacks and now it is a race of waiting which car will get the fueling done first the 25 or the 911 911 wins out for fueling but of course they are a little bit further behind on the pit lane 911 beats out the 25 patrick pile should inherit the lead when these fuel stops are done super stops by the porsche team park place car is in from gtd as well that was fifth position for york bergmeister when he came in balzan alessandro balzan comes in in the 63 uh, Scuderia Corsa car. No, in fact, he's going back out again, isn't he? Excuse me. He's had his pit stop. What a great turnaround. And the 25 BMW only now going out of the pit lane exit in from fourth position in GTLM. Tommy Milner in the four Chevy Corvette. 15 Lexus is in from GTD as well as the Park Place Porsche spins its rear Continentals and gets them up to a little more temperature before it leaves the pit lane. Fantastic bit of work in the pit lane by the Porsche GT North America crew. Meanwhile, Stephen Simpson is absolutely flying. He turns a 1 minute 8.92, which is fractions away from his fastest lap of the race on lap 86. He just completed lap 87. That was a 1 minute 9.1. All of a sudden, that gap from first to second is over five seconds. There's number yeah, 38 amazing. car on pit lane. Is he going to punch? Is that 38 is the leader in P. He was in not that long ago. And he has got a left front puncture, I think, Jeremy, as he's coming in. Shea will be able to see it better. Shea, Adam, can you see the red and white black car? He's coming down the pit lane towards me right now. Padawal Ward behind the wheel. There's a bit of bodywork loose as well. That's a bit of damage. The front left of the car is dragging along the pit lane, and the crew was actually not anticipating him coming in. Now they lower the pit board. He comes to a stop. They've got the fuel probe going in, and the mechanics are immediately running around to try and tear the nose off and put a new nose on. Now they had a buffer of a couple of laps, but right now their five race streak is in danger of ending at five, not getting the six. Shea will keep an eye on that. The car is Dishabile in the pit lane with the bodywork out. Hearing from the marshals posts on the far side of the circuit that raindrops are beginning to fall from Moss Corner and spreading over this way. It's reached the pit lane now as well. I can see people scrambling. Oh, and a big tyre carcass just on the top of the hill. Oh. And that's what the 38 car hit. The 38 car hit the tyre carcass at the top of the hill before turn in. He was weaving his way through traffic. 
and absolutely nailed it with the front of the car. Yeah, now, there's been debris there for quite a while, but I don't think it was that piece of debris. That looked a lot newer, and they'll have to put a new front clip on that car. It's going on now. Bad luck for the PC leader who has lost the lead. The 20 car has gone through, so it's going to be a chase back for Patricio Awards and the 38 car. Desperate luck for that uh, that team there. Patricio was, as you say, there was a lot of traffic there. He was on the outside of the racetrack. Uh, no, no problem there, except for that was that huge tyre carcass in the way. Which car did that come off then? Not sure, Jeremy. There had been damage over there for a while, but it was on the other side of the track. And then I thought I'd seen from one of the onboards the car, the uh, smaller bit of debris had uh, had moved across the track but it certainly wasn't that big and incidentally if anybody if there is if it is raining no one has told the race leaders because the last couple of laps both of them have been in the nines nine seven this time nine two the previous lap for our race leader and uh, they are turning a torrid place uh, pace out the front here still uh, with a few spots of rain uh, we can see on our window here but nothing significant as yet psychological rain as they say it's not real rain till it starts to move around on your windshield that's when you know it's starting to affect grip uh, Lawson Aschenbach by the way has just put his fastest lap of the race in that also the fastest lap of course for the GT Daytona leader the 57 Stevenson Audi uh, they've had rotten luck recently as well his lead now 7.3 seconds and we have a four car battle for third position overall uh, yep, and BMW versus Porsche coming in the final corner. There's a little tap from the 28 Allegra Motorsport Porsche on uh, full course yellow. Full course yellow with 51 minutes to go. Oh, and that must be for the debris on the back straight, I presume. This might just be a get out of jail card. Well, it's, for one it's, or two. it's awful news for Stephen Simpson. Awful news for Stephen yeah. Simpson. Because they can't beat the, the the Cadillac in a straight fight in the pit lane. Oh, it's not. We've got a car. Have we got a car on fire here? The steam. And this is the bottom of the hill at turn two. Driver is out. It's one of the ESM cars. It's one of the ESM cars that's gone off at the bottom of the hill. The smoke Durrani, on that car. It's people Durrani's out the car. The distinctive white and blue helmet. People's fine. He's quit the car, but there's white smoke. Coming from the car, and um, people steps away from the car, and another good run for the 22 has come to an end. People with hands on hips. Finally, our, well, our first yellow of the day. After fifth, an hour and 50 minutes, Jeremy. And, well, yeah. well, as you see it, rough look. Uh, and they can't, and the thing is, the leaders can't even get to the end from here, so they can't pit. Well, it'll be a, it'll be a lengthy caution. Well, I don't know if it'll be a lengthy know. caution, but it'll, it'll be, certainly be a while yet. And we've got 49 minutes to go. They need about 10 minutes of yellow in order to be able to get to the end from here. So 55 zero minutes to go. Probably they, will be 10 minutes, so they might be okay. Well, it'll be 10 minutes by the time they do yeah, the pit open, exactly. pit closed again. They might have, the leaders might have to come in on the end of the pit cycle. And there's, there's your tactics right there. Do you hold your position at the start? Yes, you do. If you're not going to pit until right at the end, you don't come in and then splash it. You wait. Because that stops anybody getting a wave bite. Little puff of blue-white smoke from turn one to turn two from people in Durrani's car, and then he headed down the hill. And I'm afraid it was all over for the Nismo engine by the look of it, yeah. Classic puff of flame from out of the left-hand exhaust back at the back of that car. People, yeah. magnificent work from people to get that car off the circuit very quickly and pulled up. He was out of the car pretty swiftly as well. And uh, there's been a little bit of extinguishing applied to that car, so maybe that was what I saw when I saw the white smoke. But that looks to me like a turbo has gone on that car. Flatbed is there already. Shea Adam will tell us when the pits are open. Stephen Simpson has a number of cars between himself and the lead and the second place car. But he had a seven second lead pretty much, 6.8. And 
This is going to throw everything against the wall and it's starting to rain heavier now. So if it wasn't enough to have to make the decision of can you get to the end from the pit stop here from the leading prototypes car is, uh, what tyres do we put on here, Jeremy? <laughs> yeah, that, that, is, uh, that is certainly a tricky one. Uh, what tyres you put on? You're certainly oh, it's coming pouring oh. down at the back. Oh, okay, it's wet tyres. Sense. Yes. It's wet tyres. And some people are going to have difficulty here getting back to the pits. The pass, pass around has started and it's absolutely torrential on the Andretti straight to the point where the guys who are doing the pass around are going to have to be very careful as they go by. They have done. The pit should be open next time by. That tyre carcass has moved to the, has been knocked off the circuit to the side of the circuit. Not sure why it was being left there for so no. long, to be honest. And I think the same awful. question will be, it's raining heavy enough in pit lane for people to consider getting the grooved tyres out. And the leaders are in pit lane. Shea Adam will have the number 10. The 85 will be the first one to stop for new continental wet weather tyres. How long does the rain last? It's a gamble here. It stops on its marks. The guys come over the wall for JDC Miller Motorsports. There's no thought of Stephen Simpson getting out of that car. They're taking their time to make it right as the number 10 comes to a halt. Chair. They have gone for wet tires for the 85 and slicks for the 10. They are not groove tires going on the 10. This could be the race right here for the 31, the wheel and engineering. They are putting on groove tires, so that is rain tires for the 85 and the 31. We'll have to see how long it lasts. There is already a lot of blue sky around John, so it would be different radars for different teams. The 85 driver, Stephen Simpson, gets out ahead. So that's the first thing that's important. He said rain tires about three seconds before he pulled to a stop in the pit lane. That was Stephen's decision. The sun is coming back out again. And Stephen has gone for the Continental Wets. They have got track position. Are they on the right tires? Rain for the 55 car of Tristan Nunes. Rain tires and slick for the 7-0. Right, that's the, that's the Mazdas have split their strategy. The sun is back out, but it's very, very wet on the back of the circuit. And remember, Jeremy, the Cadillacs, and I'm reminded by Marshall Pruitt of racer.com, thanks, MP, that the caddies are running very low downs force, as mandated. That will not be nice in slick conditions, in, in wet conditions, particularly with slick tyres on, is what I was trying to say. Yeah, that'll be a handful. Yeah, it will be, particularly on the fast straight when you're braking. Oh, dear. It's wet on the back straight. There's enough to see spray coming up. But now the sun but is now out now the here. sun is out and the track is still pretty warm. It dries quid pretty quickly here. Uh, is there going to be more rain? The direction from which the rain came is very black indeed. Oh, it's no, it would have come from behind us. We can't see from where we are. Well, it came, from, it came from, five, from the reports on the radio, it came from five over to us. Yeah, but the prevailing uh, wind will bring it from, uh, from the west, so from, uh, from our right. Shea could probably get a, a better view of what it looks like, although it does seem to switch that around a little bit, doesn't it? Yeah, the 70 car and the 10, the only two on slick tyres. Jordan Taylor asking that of the team uh, in on the radio, on the outlap. He is now right behind the leader, of course. It's wettest at that side of the circuit. But I think the rain, even over there, has stopped now. And the only one of the prototype cars, well, two prototype cars, did, did not... One of the prototypes did not pick up number five. Yeah, gets his lap Because up. that gets it back on lead lap. So uh, before we go back to green, there will be a, uh, a pass around. The cars that uh, in each of the classes that are between the safety car and the class leader will be waved past and allowed to take up position to the back of the field. Then the number five car will come in to make and take its uh, final service. It'll be at the back of the pack, but it will at least be on back on the lead lap. So the ESM car confirmed as engine problems. That car out, Ryan DL in the car. So there were some issues on the radio transmission for the 85 leading car from Stephen Simpson. So there may have been a bit of confusion as to what tyres went on that car. But I tell you what, Porsche 28 is coming in, asked for, for, for wet weather tyres. 
There's steam rising from the back straight now. It's yeah. not Sprit. 73 Park Place Porsches just put wets on. There's a lot of standing water on the back straight, Jeremy. The flatbed is throwing up a, a lot of spray. And that on slicks, that fast part of the circuit, that is going to be difficult. What I don't know is what it's like in the braking area down the hill to Moss Corner and how slippery that's going to be on what are now quite cold, brand new slick tyres. First couple of laps for Jordan Taylor are going to be tippy toe, aren't they? They are. And for, and for Joel Miller in the 70 car. Nobody came in from GTLM. Rain tyres ready for those cars. It's the 57 of Lawson Aschenbach, the leader in GT Daytona who is the first car behind the Cadillac safety car. Into the pit lane comes Joao Barbosa, very gingerly indeed. He's got his lap back, and now he's going to try and do his pit stop before the safety car comes around. And the number 38 car, having had that problem uh, hitting that massive piece of debris, is still on the lead lap now with the number 20 car of Ryan Lewis. So that's good. They're, they're mixed up amongst the GTLM cars. But that battle will continue. Slick Continental tyres going on to Joao Barbosa's car. Blue sky, broken cloud in the distance on the back straight. This is a nightmare, an absolute nightmare. And that's generally the, the uh, direction from which the weather comes here. But here's interesting. The 70 car is going to come back in to take off the slicks they've just put on and put on rain tyres. So they think it is too wet out the back. So this now leaves the number five, Joao Barbosa, and the number 10, both Cadillacs, as the only ones still on slick tyres. Dan Cameron's just pitted as well in the 31. What's he going to do? Uh, we know about the 70 car. They look like rain tyres that are going on. Yes, they are. Shea Adam, what's the wheel and engineering caddy doing? Might just be a splash of fuel, John. No, they are running around the other side of the car. They are changing the tires on the Whelan Corvette. They're putting slicks on that as well. The Cadillac, excuse me, dollar in the jar. They're putting slick tires onto the 31, taking off the rain tires that they put on about five minutes ago. Well, okay. I mean, and I, they, they'd actually made up a couple of positions during the pit stops uh, to put those uh, rain weather tires. Now they're going to lose that again uh, and go back uh, to, the, to the back of that little group. So that's uh, disappointing for them. But uh, interesting, the Mazda should choose to go the other way. Yeah, so Mazda's means, gone the other way. So we've now got both Mazdas on. Both Mazdas on wets. Oh, that's curious. All of the Cadillacs on slicks. The leader on wets, which he's not sure he wants to be on from what I'm hearing from the radio transmissions. But certainly, if there is no more rain, uh, slicks are what you want to be on because it'll dry out pretty quickly. Yeah. And those so, wet oh tyres. Gosh, we're going to have, um, we're going to have, yeah, the 57, number 57 car, the GTD leader is the car directly behind the safety car. So when we go back to green, we're going to have what I don't like is the GTD car leader at the front of the pack and the race yeah. leader is right in the middle of all the traffic. And we'll be going back to green yeah, this time that's around. Be, that's going to be really tricky. First and second are together. Particularly on uh, a damp track with, with slicks. A damp track with slicks for... Uh, Jordan Taylor coming through this traffic. We've got the uh, GTD leader ahead of the GT Le Mans leader. That's Stevenson Audi from 911 Porsche. Those are the first two cars in the line. Then it's John Edwards, GTLM second. Alex Sims, who was leading GTLM, now in third position. Remember, the GTLM cars are all still on slicks as well, Jeremy. They haven't changed. That's the first four behind the Cadillac safety car, which peels into the pit lane. And now it is Lawson Aschenbach on slick tyres, but on the dry part of the circuit. 85 comes through and green, green, green. We are off and running. Let's make sure nobody makes no mistakes at the start. And straight away, the 85 of Stephen Simpson dives down the inside, tries to put cars between himself and the Cadillac and does so. The caddy has got the... That must be the two of Ryan DL trying to steer from going a lap down and already it's slippery at the bottom of turn two. And this is where it's tip -toy. It's tip -toy from the bottom of turn two all the way along. And here comes the 55. The 55 of Tristan Nunes is about to go by the Cadillac and does so. 
Remember, he's on wet weather tyres. The Cadillac is on black, uh, is on the uh, slicks. Ryan DL's gone through into second. So it's now no longer Jordan Taylor in second. It's Stephen Simpson from Ryan DL for the Nissan powered Leisure. Then Jordan Taylor. Tristan Nunes, I think, has gone through. Yes, he has. <laughs> My goodness. And Joao Barbosa remembers back on the lead lap at the end of this. It's going to be a very tricky. I would suggest maybe ten, five ten or laps. six. Well, ten yeah, laps. That's maybe. too wet, Jeremy, on the back straight. Yeah, if it, I didn't realise how far around it was still wet. I thought it was just from Moss Corner to eight, but it's from the bottom of the hill at the bottom of two into three. It's basically half the racetrack. Yeah, it is half the racetrack. Absolutely right. Your mm. problem is going to be that the other half of the racetrack, for you on wet weather tyres, wears those tyres out. So you might have to stop for a new set of wets if it exactly. doesn't dry quick enough. Exactly. That's why I think I would rather be on slicks right now it's going to and be tough very it out. very yeah tough it out uh, it, 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 it will we'll see over the next few laps what the the uh, lap speed differential is between these two and whether then the continental wet weather tires can hold on in these for them, difficult conditions. Change of the GTLM lead. John Edwards has gone from third to first. Patrick Peeley now second. Alex Sims still in third position. In the third position. No, Alex Sims has gone through. So Patrick Peeley falling back in the Porsche. Remember the GTLM field still on slick tyres. It's 10 seconds back from Peeley to Richard Westbrook in the 67 Chip Ganassi <laughs> racing car. Let's just throw everything up in the air and see where the chips fall because it's all just been turned on its head. Head. Jordan Taylor now in fourth position has lost seven seconds on that first lap to the leader Stephen Simpson and GTD by the way is that's a dogfight I and mean, everybody is, uh, is is in contention there now yeah we've got uh, oh the top 15 I think back on the lead lap haven't we so Lawson Ashen back by four seconds and again they are on slick tyres. The 57 Audi leads the Acura number 93. Acura number 93 going for three in a row. On the dry part of the circuit, Stephen Simpson a 2 or 4 uh, no, check that time. Uh, 119 last time around. The Cadillac a 123. 75 in the pit lane. Stop plus 60 for Tristan Fortier. He came in while the pits were closed. Oops. Keys to the race. Pit pressure, no penalties. He may have pitted when it was the prototype pit stops, actually, is what I'm hearing. Now, it is drying at two now. So the dry part of the track is extending back towards the start-finish line. Yeah, it's dry at the bottom of two there. The space of a couple of laps, damp through three, and one or two people still looking for grip. But the guys on wet weather tyres will be looking for the damp to cool those tyres down to stop the tread blocks moving along. But on the top of the hill, from three to four, it's still wet enough to see some spray coming off the tyres. Stephen Simpson then is still quicker in the first sector than Jordan Taylor, and that's where he's got the least advantage. He was 1.3 seconds quicker there. And he's going to be a couple of seconds quicker. Yep, two seconds quicker in sector two. He's building up a lead now. And Jordan Taylor is already 14 seconds back on slick tyres. Now, you need about 45 seconds here to just change the tyres in the pit lane and get out. And the number 48 car, Madison Slow Snow, is... Uh slipping back a little bit lost a couple of positions I think on the last lap and uh, number 57 lost nice back he's got about a four second lead over Andy Lally who is under pressure from Alessandro Balzan and Drew Mool. Stephen Simpson 118 eight last time around Jordan Taylor 121 two the prototypes at the head of the field Stephen Simpson getting quicker. The other cars on wets are just on the point of slowing down. But remember, Stephen Simpson has worked his way through most of the traffic. So Simpson now has to get that hammer down and see what he can get. I think he's going to have to pit again for dry weather tyres. It's still slippery on the back straight on slick tyres. The number three Corvette getting very squirrely. Antonio Garcia 
has Dirk Muller in the Chip Ganassi Racing 66, and every time he makes a gear change, the back end of the Corvette just moves around a little bit, but it's much, much drier now. It's much drier. Je Jeremy, you were right. It's going to be five laps, and it will be dry. Yeah, but uh, he's uh, slipped back quite a long way. He's, he's now what, 11 seconds behind is Jordan Taylor, so that's... That's not insurmountable by uh, by any means. No, uh, well, particularly and if Steve Simpson's got a pit again. If he had, now the choice is, do you pit him now and bet on him coming back through the field on a new set of Continental dry tyres, or you do you say to him, you've got 32 minutes there, drive it until the tyres fall off it, basically. Yeah, and the slicks are on the wall for the 85. What would you do? Would you leave him out or would you pit him? Uh, I'd have a good close look at the weather, make sure there wasn't going to be any more rain coming along. Uh, otherwise, I'd, I might well make that s a switch sooner rather than later. But I'm pretty sure it's going to be dry to the end of the race. I'll probably come in sooner rather, rather than later in case there's another full course caution. There is a dry line now. A dry line running down from four to five. And last time around, Stephen Simpson, 119-0. Jordan Taylor, an 18-5. Half a second quicker. The track is coming back to the Cadillac. He's in fourth position now, but the gap to the leader is only 7.3 seconds. It's half of what it was recently. Five seconds has disappeared in the last couple of laps. In fact, in the last lap, a 14-6 from Taylor to a 19 flat. They've got to get Simpson in now. They've got to get Simpson in now. Still a half an hour to go. The decision has been made. And a spin for the two car. Ryan DL spins it at the Moss Corner at turn five. So it's still slippery there, but that's about the only part of the circuit that it is still difficult, and DL will be kicking himself. The team are asking Stephen Simpson how the tyres are degrading. Ryan yeah. DL coming in and just losing the back end of the number two car. Very slow, lazy spin. He was under... 85 car is in. In the pit lane. And, and the 55. And the 55 of Tristan Nunes. That'll put Jordan Taylor back into the lead of this race. We'll go down to Shea Adam and I'll tell you when the 10 car comes by, Shea. This go will on. be a stop. They will give him a splash of fuel, but they are doing tyres for the 85, the 55, and the two. Ryan Dial makes his way into the pit lane as well. Just a splash of fuel for both of those cars. And the tyre change will be the longest part of these pit stops. It is a race for the second place position coming out of the pit lane. It's just 70 in as well. Oh, just think if Tom Long could stay on the 85 there. First off, the, the left front, it was reluctant to leave. The 85 beats out the 55 Mazda, which just now leaves its pit box and the number two. Ryan Dial gained a lot of position back during that pit stop, but what coulda, shoulda, woulda. Yeah, and I, I'm, I'm really surprised the Mazda team would have uh, elected to... Uh, go to the same strategy, having made the decision to split them at the pit stops, I really don't know why they would have gone back on that. Uh, well, I that's guess a driver be, choice. I guess. It's a driver uh, choice. It I was very, so. very wet yeah. on the back straight. Ryan DL, I won, says to the team, we ran one lap too many, lost the tyres completely. And that has handed the race to the Cadillacs once again. That's it. Game over. Half an hour to go, and the Cadillacs in the Mobile One Sports Car Grand Prix have got the advantage and I can't see this going away for them. Mm. And in the GTLM, by the way, the number 25 car, Alexander Sims, is just doing a magnificent job. He's, he's moved up from third in the class at the restart into the lead and he's pulling away now from uh, Patrick Pile. Only about a couple of tenths on that last lap, but he's extended his gap between the, the BMW and the Porsche to almost three seconds. And number 24 car that was leading prior, uh, after the restart, or at the restart, is now another three seconds back. GTLM BMW lead the 25 of Alexander Sims from Patrick Pelier. 3.2 seconds and then four seconds further back in third, John, uh, John Edwards in the 24 car. In GTD, Lawson Aschenbach, as it has been for quite a long while now, still with that three-second lead over Andy Lally in the 93. 57 Audi leading from the 93 Acura, then Ferrari, 
Alessandro Balzan in the 63 car. The 16 Lamborghini makes it four different manufacturers in the top four, and he's only half a second back from a podium position. 40, 45 seconds, the gap between Jordan Taylor and Stephen Simpson. 27 minutes to go. And now for Stephen Simpson, it will just be full attack to see if he can pull back that four seconds. Schwab Barbosa was a lap off the lead not yeah. so very long ago. Now he's in a podium position. Indeed so. And uh, the Cadillac now is one, two, three in this race. Having started first, fifth and tenth. Now one, two, three. Remarkable how things, how quickly things can turn around. So... Jordan Taylor now, last lap of 112. A little bit slower. It's still clearly damp out there. Alexander Sims, just to tell you how damp it is, the leader, Jordan Taylor in the Cadillac, a 112 flat, a 114.9 for Alexander Sims in a GTLM car on slicks. So only just over two seconds slower than the leader. So it is drying out, and the cars that have the mechanical grip the GTLM cars are doing better than the Cadillacs that don't have as much of the aero grip that that Dallara chassis needs to get it around the corners. Yeah, number 25 car, I'll just say his fastest lap of the race actually is uh, continuing yep. to pull away there. Is Alexander Sims looking good here for BMW Team RLL. Still some black clouds out there, but not coming from the right direction. It's bright sunshine now. The Battle at the head of the GTD field seems to be going to the Stevenson Audi. Uh, sitting in behind him at the moment, the number 15 Lexus, which uh, must be a lap down on the field. Yes, it is. Jack Hawksworth is uh, the first car off the lead lap in GTD. Sitting in uh, 31st position. Pit caller is the 26 prototype challenge car in third position in that class. Uh, GTLM, uh, when you need a bit of action, just go straight to GTLM. Tommy Milner has Dirk Muller right ahead of him in the Ford as they go up to Moss Corner. Ahead of them is Tony Garcia. This is all battle for position, and Richard Westbrook is ahead of Tonio. So fourth, fifth, sixth, and seventh are together. Oh, and Tony Bruni's just joined in uh, on that as well. Jimmy Bruni, excuse me. So we have fourth to eighth, line astern, passing the GTD number 16 Lamborghini round the outside in the turn here. Turt Muller's on the damp stuff there. That's brave. Also coming through there, the 55 Mazda, Tristan Nunes adding a third category of car to that little scrap. 25 minutes to go. And the lead to the 85, Orica, has gone out by a couple of seconds, 47 seconds now. But Stephen Simpson has closed in and he's right behind Joao Barbosa. Right yep. behind Barbosa. So he's got to get past Barbosa to get onto the podium. And then there's 25 seconds between him and the 31 Cadillac. Now, we had a great battle between the 5 and the 85 at the Seal and Six Hours of the Glen a week ago. And it's back on again. And it must be in a relatively slow pit stop, I think, for the number 70 car, because that is now a lap off the lead in the prototype ranks. Andy Lally has just done the number 93 Acura's fastest lap of the race with a 17.7, but he's five seconds at the moment away from that third win in succession. Looking for the hat trick. Lally and Catherine Legg. Andy Lally on the anchor, trying to close down Lawson Ashen back in the 57 Stevenson Audi. Sandro Balzan has just got himself a little bit of a breathing space from Jerome Mull now up to nearly two seconds. Big battle for, what, fourth position in GTLM. The uh, first three 
kind of equally distance, about four seconds apart, with Alexander Sims still stretching that lead just a little bit over Patrick Pile in the Porsche. John Edwards running in third position, similar distance behind. Bit of a gap back to Richard Westbrook, who's yeah, had a couple of seconds last time around over the number three car. Jordan Taylor's back in the groove, Jeremy. 1.10.4 for that car. 1.11.9 for Dane Cameron. And the gap between first and second, well, that's over as a contest. That's 23 seconds. And then there's a, another 24 seconds between second and third. The battle is for third position. With Stephen Simpson now held up behind Joao Barbosa. His last yeah. lap of 1.12.1. And this is really frustrating, having had a real chance of the race here before the rain shower and picking the wrong tyres, communications issues for the 85 JDC Miller Motorsport team as Stephen came into the pits. And we've had a change of lead, by the way, in PC. Uh, Patricia Award has moved back ahead because the number uh, 26 car... Oh, no, 20, 20, 20 car, 20 yeah, car. 20 car made a pit stop uh, a, a, a few laps ago. Now the battle in GT Le Mans, that cracking scrap, is coming up behind Alessandro Balzan, who's third in the 63 Ferrari, third in GTLM, uh, GT Daytona rather, and there's a pass as the Ford versus Chevy battle gets for oh there's a touch and an off this is a huge off huge off going down turn four and it's the leader it's the race leader involved there trying to go four wide as the Ford and the Corvette was were battling and Ricky Taylor gets involved in that uh, excuse me, Jordan Taylor gets involved with that he's moving again the Corvette's right front is destroyed. And that was all happening on the slightly damp part of the circuit still underneath the Chevrolet Bridge. The number four Corvette, Tom Milner, trying to go by the Ford. And I think had it done, right front ripped asunder from that car and has made heavy contact with the right-hand side wall. The tyre wall doing its job. But that car is going nowhere. And now... Jordan Taylor with damage. How much damage? It was big contact and he did hit the wall. The Corvette was airborne for a while. So the Ten race car is still leading. 20 minutes. To, well, yeah, he had 24 seconds. He's yeah. only just leading. Yeah. Left rear damage to the 10 car. He's gone through, missing the pod. If that's all he's got away with, he's a very lucky lad. Uh, rear tour on the left side out is out of kilter on that car. Oh yeah, they've got damage. The rear wings loose as well. Around, yeah. yeah, it's going to have to come in. Uh, the rear clip. Tom Milner. Tommy Milner is out of the car. He's been seen by the first responders. He said, "Yes, I'm fine." So we had a PC car, a GTD car, and then three wide behind as. Well, that's extraordinary. Jordan Taylor was nearly past them and then seemed to either lock up or spin up the rear wheels. No, he was around the outside, but he wasn't clear of the number 10 car uh, as he tried to turn into the corner. There's a lot of marbles on the yeah, outside of there. Agreed, Jeremy. At turn four. Do you think that was just a, a touch? Well, a, a look here the from Tom Milner, on he got the through. Ford. He was past the Ford, then from the right-hand side. Yeah. Either the Corvette ran wide or uh, uh, Jordan Taylor pinched down. And I, I really can't say which it was there, Jeremy. I agree. Very definition of a racing accident. Three wide there, though, with a 24-second lead. Well, yeah, but, I mean, you've got so much speed uh, coming down. You've got much bigger acceleration than the uh, Corvette coming down True. that hill. Uh, but the problem is there's, there's a whole bunch of other cars in there as well. Well, it's... this race, again, yeah. is thrown upside down. 18 minutes remaining. Now, um, short yellow pits will not open, is what we're being told. Yeah, inside the final half an hour of the race. The 10 car with new bodywork ready for it. It needs a new rear clip and a new rear wing. 
and query damage to left rear suspension. My goodness, they've been lucky if they've got away with that. You know, I think they might have. Who? The 10 car. Well, that, yeah, that rear wing, you can't leave No, that. the left rear suspension, Jeremy. If yes, they've got away with exactly. that, I, uh, that, they build those cars tough to Labra. That's extraordinary. Oops. He's weaving around there. He almost took out. Uh, he's, he's got a problem. Oh. He almost took out. Something's uh, bent, he says. He almost took out the cars that were being waved by. Might get a stop and go for that. Might get a stop and go for that. Not supposed to weave around behind the safety car while the pass around is going on. Yeah. And the number seven, number 70 car, by oh, the way, is back assumes, on the lead lap. Always assumes he was intentionally waving around if well, something's wobbling. Yeah. Uh, yes, something is wobbling, and it's wobbling more on that left rear. Oh, I tell you what, the, the, when that car comes into the pits, number 31 car will lead, having been, well, struggling all weekend long. How remarkable is that? And then Joao Barbosa is running third at the moment. Then Stephen Simpson with the fastest car on the track in car number 85. So here's the question. So here's the question. That tyre wall needs repairing. And I know we haven't long since had the back to green, and we're seeing it's a quick yellow, but there's 16 minutes left. How quick can that be done? We still haven't got the car moved yet. So right now, you leave him out. Well, you leave him did. out in the indeed, lead. Indeed so. Because he's going to lose the race as soon as he pits. Mm, of course, you're right. So you leave him out and hope that the race doesn't go back to green. Yep. Because he's if he come, if the, he's not going to go in until he open the pits anyway. And if they don't, if it's a, a, if they're not opening the pits, then he comes in, he gets to have a drive through. So yep. you leave him out. Absolutely. You leave him out and hope the race doesn't restart. That's the, we talked about a two hour 40 minute sprint race with strategy. We didn't necessarily expect the strategy to have to come in yellow flag periods. And that's exactly what's happened both times. Which tires and now with a damaged car, this could be the most damaged car we've ever seen win a race. This is Audi-esque, isn't it? 15 and a half minutes to go. The Corvette or the remnants of it Three quarters of a Corvette going on to the back of that car. Tom Milner, by the way, has walked away from that. A very scary looking accident. High speed, high impact, and off the ground for that car. They build them tough at Pratt and Miller. And the best thing we've seen is Tommy Milner walking away from that car and seeing quite clearly to the first responders, yep, yeah, I'm absolutely fine. I don't even think he was helped out the car. He opened the driver's door and walked away. There is no right front suspension on that car at all. There is no right front wing. There is no right front anything on that number four Corvette. Not that long ago that that was uh, just concrete and a bridge abutment down there. Yeah. And that's what we were saying earlier on about this car, this racing circuit still having the character of the old one, but having been updated. Now, our brilliant Bobcat driver is down there rearranging the tyres. He's got 14 and a half minutes to get this sorted. Ricky Taylor is going to, next time around, get right to the pit wall so that they can lean over and have a look at it. I'm sorry, Jordan Taylor. I keep putting Ricky in that car. Sorry, guys. Jordan Taylor. Well, Ricky Taylor will be up on the wall if uh, I know anything about that team. Uh, for sale, one used Corvette, only raced on Sundays. Slightly used, pre-loved, I think, is the uh, the word for that. Yeah, had a lot of love over the over onboard the, uh, camera still working on the Corvette. Very good. Now this brings back into play, of course, Jeremy. Both of the remaining Cadillacs, the undamaged ones, and Stephen Simpson, having been 47 seconds down. Yeah, it, that's absolutely true. And uh, Simpson is, is directly behind Barbosa, I think, on the race track. There's a few cars between Barbosa and Cameron, uh, uh, who is directly, of course, right now behind Jordan Taylor. So if it stays yellow, that, that's the situation. If it goes green, that is going to become 
uh, critical. It's a team sport, isn't it, Jeremy? And we've said that before. And the chat that's going backwards and forwards between the number 10 driver, Jordan Taylor, and the Koenig and Minolta team is amazing. So here's what we've learned. If the pits open, or if it goes back green, we've been told the pits won't open under the yellow. So if the pits open, or if it goes back green, possibly the latter, probably the latter, should I say, the 10 car will come in at the first opportunity. They will take off the broken tailpiece, have a look at the tow. If the tow link is broken or the suspension damaged, they'll fix it. If it isn't, there's a new tailpiece ready to go on and they will send him. Yeah. Shea Adam is, has leaned over the wall as best she can. Shea, what can you tell us? I'm pretty sure it's just a broken tailpiece. The uh, clip on the right-hand side is loose. You can see where it was once attached. There is no remainder, no hint of a remainder even on the left-hand side. But I think it might just be that tailpiece. They might have gotten lucky. OK, so it's a new tail and rear wing. The Bob. The Bobcat driver has done a great job in getting... He's going to be a candidate for the Spirit of the Race Award, that Bobcat driver, this weekend. Mm. Uh, start your voting for that now, by the way. Michelin Post Race Tech coming up uh, at the end of the race on IMSA Radio. Your votes, please, for Spirit of the Race. And your questions, please. So there's three GTLM cars between... Dane Cameron and Joao Barbosa, and then uh, Stephen Simpson directly behind him, if and when we get back to green. Hashtag Michelin PRT at IMSA Radio for your questions, points arising, or observations. Lots to talk about here. And hashtag CTMP SOTR for your Spirit of the Race Award. That Bobcat will have its own Twitter feed by the end of this, I'm almost certain. All right. 11 minutes. Oh, he's letting the race, he's letting the field go by here. Ricky Taylor, he's he's getting ready to pull into the pit lane. The lights are yeah, out on the Corvette they, car. They can't pass him because we're still under yellow, so nobody can go past Correct. him. Correct. But at least he signaled his intention, staying right over to the right Correct. hand side of the racetrack. So when it does go, uh, safety car does pull it off, he will be out of the way of everybody else. Bits of carbon coming off the back of that car. And Jordan Taylor will head into the pit lane from the lead. And then it's game on. There are three GT cars between the new... Oh, he hasn't come in. He hasn't. He's thrown everybody at dummy because the pits are still closed, I presume, until we That's go green. So now we're green, and there's a pass before the line. Now, is that going to be all right for Dan Cameron? He did go past before the line on the restart. And the, the 85 car, Stephen Simpson, right round the outside of Xiao Barbo. So he's had a little look, but he's had to drop in behind as they go over the top of the skyline. So Dan Cameron leads from Barbosa in second and Stephen Simpson in third with Rick Simpson's going to try and go around the outside. Oh, he's been oh. hit. He's been hit. Yeah, Barbosa's wow, hit him, Barbosa's but he's done it. it again. Barbosa holds on to it, Jeremy, somehow on the inside. But he didn't give racing room that, there. Drifted no. away from the inside for my money. That's two races in a row. Barbosa has been really on the on the Ragged very edge. limit. Yeah. Uh, the very limit of within the, the the regulations. And it was with Stephen Simpson he four knew, times. He knew wasn't he was it? He, he knew he was overtaken there, and he just drove into the side of Stephen Simpson. I'm sorry. I, I, I'll have to look at that, that again. I don't think I'm going to change my mind on that one. It looked as though he was moving out from the apex of the corner for sure. Dan Cameron has a three-second lead over Steve Simpson and Ryan DL up into third for ESM Tequila Patron. Jordan Taylor, remember, touring back to the pit lane to get that damage assessed as in comes one of the Porsches. It, one of the GT Porsches is in. It's the lead, it's the better Second. place one. Second place, Patrick Peely is in. Oh my goodness, more drama. In comes the number 10, Shea Adam with the 911. 
It pulls to a stop. The headlights go off. They're putting fuel into the car, and they've just put the air jack in. The car is now sitting up elevated while they are fueling, but there are no tires over the wall, and, John, a drop of rain just hit me on the face. Jordan Taylor is coming down the pit lane, which has just gotten very, very dark indeed. Can't tell what's going on with the 911, but the driver's door has just opened. I think Patrick Pile is getting out of no. this car. The number 10 hits its marks, goes up on the air jack. The crew immediately begins ripping the old piece off. The uh, tail section that they have on the car, they're not doing any suspension work on the car. John is able to tell me that as I look back down for the 911, the driver door is open. Patrick Pile gets out. That car's day is done. They are pulling the engine cover area off, trying to get the bodywork removed, uh, the panel from the deck. Now they've got the deck off. Now they can get the 10's tail off, put the new one on as the leader comes by. That's one lap down for the number 10 of Jordan Taylor. 85 goes by as well and the number 2 of Ryan Dial. Now he's down to fourth behind the Mazda and the GTLM field starts to come through. They have the new tail section ready. They are just lining it up. And they're doing a new engine cover as well on this car. It now shows a number seven on the side of it, John, as they secure the new tailpiece into place. Well, we were told at the Glen that at some point they were going to start thinking about this championship and points. That's what we are seeing right now as the rain starts to fall heavier on the pit lane. John, could there be one more turn in this race? The race, the race leader, Dane Cameron, has just turned his best yeah. lap of the race. The third place car of Ryan DL just turned his best lap of the race. That was naughty. Shao Barbosa in Watch behind the 911 Porsche, which I think was having a problem, but he's got a car alongside of Jeremy. You can't just pull out no, like no, that. No. The no, 10 is down awesome. and away. And uh, give Stephen Simpson his due. He gave him about as much room as he could. Absolutely. And uh, Ryan DL used the kerfuffle in front of him to go past Tristan Nunez and take over what is now third position and DL's just put a 108.994 in and the fastest centre section yep. of the race. And Dane Cameron has turned his best lap again for the second lap in a row. 109.598 for Dane Cameron in car number 31. <laughs> and it's raining again to quote Super Trump. But we've only got six minutes left. <laughs> And just throw everything at it now. Dan Cameron, 2.4 seconds is the lead. So a little bit of time made up, about half a second made up last time by Stephen Simpson. He's got to get those Continental tyres up to pressure and to operating temperature. We know that 85 car is quick. The 31 car has not been the quickest car this weekend, but that's not what happens in endurance racing. And half an hour to go, I was convinced it was all over. And, oh, f uh, problems for the 10 car. I still don't think the back end of that car is doing what Jordan Taylor wants it to do. He's trying to stay out of the way of the top three who put them another lap down. They did not do any suspension work on that car. So he is touring around for what will be seventh position. I don't think he's going to lose two laps to the 52 car. So he'll get seventh position points, but that puts the championship lead, if not in jeopardy, certainly, once again, it's going to close everything up. It's all happening in yeah. the last five minutes. Isn't it just a Dane Cameron again for the third consecutive lap, his best lap of the race. It's getting heavier rain. GTLM, <laughs> Sims, Edwards and Westbrook. Ford again on the podium at the expense of Porsche. Two BMWs, one, two. GTD, eight second, 5.8 seconds between Aschenbach and Andy Lally. Audi from Acura and Balzan's close right into the back of Lally for Ferrari, championship leader on the podium again. What a consistent season they've had. The 63 cars not won a race, but I don't think it's been off the podium for the last three or four. And then it's Jens Klingman further back in Five fourth in position. Right. Five in a row. Yeah. Big, ploppy rain, large raindrops, and they hurt, I'm hearing, from the pit lane. 93, Andy Lally, second place in GTD at Moss Corner, turn five. Has the Alessandro Balzan driven championship leader in GTD, Tona, right behind him now. A little bit further back, Jens Klingman ran about a second and three quarters. The engine has gone on the 911. Second time that's happened this season for Patrick Pile. 
went up in a spectacular way at Silverstone and it's teeming down on the back straight. It's teeming down, it's coming down like steroids. Three and a half minutes to go. <laughs> this is unbelievable. Drama, excitement, entertainment, and now the weather playing its part. And it's tiptoe through. The raindrops, not the tulips here. This is not all over. Whoa, it's heavy rain. Dane Cameron struggling all that car. He at can't turn get 10. it to turn in at turn 10. He did, but man. Two seconds between first and second. Two laps to go at the end of this one, I reckon. The leaders are still lapping in under 62, uh, 72 yeah, seconds, remarkable. Jeremy. I mean, that was, that was, this is a definition of on the limit driving. Fourth, fifth and sixth for GT11 together. Garcia in the Corvette, the Ford of Muller and Jimmy Bruni in the 912. <laughs> Fantastic stuff. This is a championship battle for the Corvette number three in the 66 Ford. Round the turn here, they come. Jimmy Bruni, the spoiler there. And Jimmy will want a bit of redemption after losing a nailed on podium a week ago with a left front tire that went down on him. Well, well, what an absolutely cracking race. Lots of green flag at the start, great racing. Great racing at the head of the field between Ooh, the Oregon. 54 car down the inside of the 28 there. Dive bomb move at last corner. Is that even for, for position? Yeah, it was actually yeah. for 14th, 14th position <laughs> in the class. And one, two, three, four wide. And the leader's in there picking his way through. Dean Cameron is not held up at all. And now puts four GT cars all battling between himself and Simpson. Simpson's got to be careful here, Jeremy. He's got second position in the bag. He's trying to go around the inside, the outside, over the top or underneath. He tries each and every way. White flag next time by for the leader. The problem is the GT cars, of course, have got a little bit more mechanical grip in the slower corners, Jeremy, and it's teaming down a rain. It's throwing it down at Moss Corner. Pouring on pit lane as well. Dean Cameron has edged away and off. Car off into the tires. The pits are closed. This is the last but one corner. Who's hit the wall? They're going slowly, and it's, oh, this will be a red flag. 52 is on its roof. 52 is on its roof. And that car's hit hard twice. The race is over. Cameron wins for Cadillac. Stephen well, Simpson will be There's, second. Well, he's got to get around the next lap. Where is he on the racetrack? Well, he's, yes, absolutely. The race will count down to zero. It will be double yellows and checker next time around. And the 52 car, Ostella is the driver. He's talking on the radio. That's the good news that I can bring you. And once again, the intervention team's there very, very quickly. The door is open. And it will be white flag. Yeah. Because the time has not counted down. So just going through, Dan Cameron has to keep it on the island in the wet weather. But he's not under any pressure now because he's behind the Cadillac safety car. Yeah, and he's got a whole cushion of cars between him as well. So 25, leader in GTLM, went off watching the crash of the 52 car, David Estella, who managed to park it beautifully on its roof behind a tyre bundle so we couldn't see where it had gone. Just slid off on the wet, onto the grass, and onto the roof of the Ligier. Once again, the Bobcat is on the scene to put the tyres right. But the last lap board is out. David Estella is out of the car, hands on hips. Not a scratch even on his helmet. He's talking to the docks. Nasty looking, but absolutely amazing, the integrity of these carbon fibre tubbed LMP cars. That's a shame for the local driver, David Osella, making his first start with this team in a, in a uh, full prototype. He'd driven from before in PC, and that's success. He won at Sebring for PR1 Mathis Motorsports. He just lost it, got onto the grass, and at that point, Jeremy, bye as bye. he comes through out of eight into nine, 
hits at about a 45 degree angle and just flips the car onto its roof. Did that with a Jaguar XJ6 4 litre sport once, exactly the same. Parked it perfectly, facing the wrong direction, but on its roof. That's, that's David shame, Estella obviously, the day off. we done that PR, one of the most sports team that, uh, that works so hard. And it, uh, it, uh, in GTD, I was just watching the progress of Sage Karam in that car number 14, who made up several positions since the previous restart. Just to tidy up the previous yellow flag, Jeremy, the good news is Tommy Milner evaluated and released from the track medical center. Evidence of a safe and strong Corvette. Thought he was, but uh, that is the official word. Let's start with GT Daytona, Jeremy. A double for John Stevenson's team. He's not here this weekend. They took their maiden victory in GT4 yesterday. They'll take GTD for the Audi here. B BMW, their mid victory for Audi as well this weekend. Alexander Sims for BMW, the 25 car, and at the front of the field, the Cadillac streak continues at the Mobile One Sports Car Grand Prix with the 31 wheel and engineering car, meaning all three of the Cadillacs have now taken a victory this year in the IMSA WeatherTech Sports Car Championship. Steven Simpson, another second place for GDC Miller Motorsport ahead of a podium for the Tequila Patron ESM team. Patricio O'Ward continues the winning streak for the 38. That looked in doubt, and it's 1-2 for BMW. Alexander Sims and John Edwards, 25 from 24. Ford onto the podium again after being really not there on pace. But once again, it's Richard Westbrook who pedals his way to a podium in the dying minutes. <laughs> that was two hours and 40 minutes of non-stop action. The 57 coming across the line now. It is a double for Matt Bell and Lawson Aschenbach. They take their first victory for Audi this year, the 57 car, and the delightful double for Stevenson, having won in GT4, the GS class, yesterday in Continental Tires. I'm not sure I can think of another team that's done that. Let me know if you think otherwise. At Michelin, uh, Michelin PRT, hashtag Michelin PRT, at IMSA Radio for Post Race Tech and CTMP SOTR. That's the hashtag for spirit of the race. Shea Adam down in a damp pit lane. Down here in the uh, BMW celebration area, I don't think Bill Oberlin breathed for the last little bit of that race. And for somebody who's got that logo tattooed on his heart, it's got to mean even more to have not only two wins back to back, dude, but now a one two for BMW. And you're right in this championship thing. I told you, we're, we're coming. We're clawing our way back every race now. I mean, so you come off Coda second, uh, Watkins Glen a first, uh, and now a first. It's amazing. Never count Team RLL and this BMW out. This M6 has found some new life in it, and uh, it is performing amazing. And what does it mean to get these two wins back to back, knowing that your next one is BMW's home race, Lime Rock? Yeah, well, hey, whenever you get these, these wins are so difficult. I mean, imagine uh, the driver lineup in all these cars. It's the best in the entire world. I'm honored to be a part of it with them. And then anytime you can get a win and get a leg up on any one of these guys that are so awesome, uh, it's, uh, it's a great day. Congrats, Bill. Thanks. The checkered flag is in the hand of Dan Cameron in the pit lane. He'll never be more pleased to see a pit lane at the end of the race. Extraordinary end to the race. See if we can grab some more of the winners before we stand to shear down. As Jeremy Shaw and I are getting ready to rub ourselves down with a, a cloth filled with warm halibut oil. Honestly, I have no clue what went on in the end of that race. The 31 car coming round to victory lane. Shea Adam uh, is picking off some more of our winners' interviews for us live from trackside here on IMSA Radio. Eric Curran, do you have any idea what the heck just happened? I think you won. I have no idea what just happened, but hey, we haven't been had the, uh, the best of luck this year, but that was luck on our side and uh, it all panned out. So uh, I'll take it any way we can get it. Wheel and Cadillac was not the best car here today, but the way it all worked out, the rain and the strategy and all that, we'll take it. Good job, Eric. Yeah, good stuff. Michelin post-race tech to come.
hashtag Michelin PRT at IMSA Radio for your thoughts on this one. Uh, we may have to take some time to go through all of this. At hashtag CTMP SOTR for Spirit of the Race, your nominations, please. I'm going for the Bobcat driver. I think he was great this weekend. So an, another win for Cadillac, and all three Cadillacs have won now this year as Shea Adam is hustling up to grab our GT Daytona victory party from Stevenson Audi. Sun is out down by the podium now, and Andrew Davis is in Shea's sights. Andrew Davis, wow, I mean, what a weekend for Stevenson. Doesn't get any better than this, and you finally got a win with the four rings on. Did you ever think it was gonna come here? Oh, no, yeah, we've had success here before, but just, oh, what a feeling. It's been a while since we've been in victory lane, and just so proud of the team. And, you know, we lost a, a team member recently, uh, Dexter Johnson, who was very important to us. So this race is for him, and uh, oh, just, such a great job. The Stevenson Motorsports crew is great. The Audi ran great. Lawson did a great job in mixed conditions. Just so happy. Congrats. Thank you. So that's three of our four winners. The 38 team have continued their winning streak. Patricio O'Ward on his way down to the podium now. Shea Adam is down there. We'll grab a, a word with him in just a second before we hand the PA back to the formalities. Remember, we continue on IMSA Radio. Thanks to XM201, Sirius 145. You picked a good day to be with us again. Lime Rock Park coming up in a couple of weeks' time, and we'll be back with XM Sirius as well as IMSA.com, the IMSA app, and IMSA TV and radio together for the race itself. Share, just jump in when you get Patricio if you can from the 38 while well, jeremy tells us about the points positions where do you want to start uh well, what have you got done well i've got them all done just right about. go on start let's start at the top of the shop then in prototype right in prototype now the uh, right, hang on a second let's go down for an interview good. i knew that would happen go on shit. james french another win that uh, that one was pretty entertaining though tell us about it from your point of view yeah that was a lot more uh, entertaining than we anticipated from our perspective uh with the weather and the crazy start it was uh yeah exciting race Perfect record this year. Congrats. Yeah, so far so good. Thank you. Shea Adam done fine work this afternoon uh, for us down in the pit lane as our Continental Tire pit lane reporter will stand her down now and we'll bring to an end uh, our broadcast. We continue on IMSA Radio via the IMSA app, IMSA.com and RadioLeMond.com. Uh, we'll go to Michelin Post Race Tech. We'll give you the points positions and we'll start taking some of your questions. Hashtag Michelin PRT. And for your nominations for the Spirit of the Race, CTMP SOTR. A reminder that Jeremy Shea and myself, John Hindoff, back in a couple of weeks' time. Full coverage from Lime Rock Park, Continental Tire, and the IMSA Championship Series. Much of that in sound and vision for you as well with IMSA TV and IMSA Radio together. A quick final thank you from me for the Marshalls recovery crew and everyone else here, Miles Brandt and Ron Fellows and the rest of the team at Canadian Time Motorsport Park. Once again, you've done us proud here at IMSA. Hope you've enjoyed being with us here at the track. Drive safely if you're leaving us. Stay tuned to 90.7 FM for the formalities from the Victory Circle. And we'll be back in a couple of weeks' time as we have more top-class endurance racing from flag to flag. It's action all the way, and it's all live here on IMSA Radio.